Good. We're on air. Thank you very much for coming and enjoying our Municipal Budget Committee of Hampton, New Hampshire on the day after Christmas in 2018. If you'd all stand and, oh, you're all anxious to stand and yeah, pledge well, allegiance to our republic, aren't you? Well, let us do it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before I forget, let us do the member introduction. Mr. Frank, you enjoy starting off, so please do. Well, thank you. Uh, Frank DeLuca, school board representative. Brian Warburton. My name is Jones. Mike Bluff. Bob Ladd, precinct representative. David Morrow. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen representative. Stephen LaBarge. Thank you. Um, and announce our secretary? Yeah. Go ahead, David. <laughs> You're the chairman. Please do it. I know. I'm giving you the opportunity to do so. No, you do it. Right. We also have the lovely <laughs> and gracious Mrs. Barbara Kravitz joining us as our report secretary. Okay. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, There's Mr. Moore. Only two thumbs up. You're going to get all night. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moore, for the prediction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, information request is. Hey guys, let's get on to our agenda now. Uh, under old business, we get information requests. Um, and what we have is, uh, we got the CIP. I guys sent that out to you guys, right? And I assume we can classify that as satisfy, yes? Yep. yep. Okay. There were a number of requests made at our last meeting uh, of Christy Pulliam during her MIS presentation. Um, and so they're reflected on our spreadsheet now. They are the 2018 article balance relative to the technology article. Uh, the new disk drives intended usage, she wasn't certain of that. She was going to get back to us. Likewise, uh, Brian, you talked about the PC replacement schedule, and she said she had an Excel spreadsheet, and she assured us we'd get the Excel workbook on that, so we've got that there. The wiring costs associated with MIS, I think it was like $5,000 every year for the last whatever number of years. Uh, she wasn't sure exactly what they were going to rewire, so we asked her to get back to us on that. She's got software licenses up there. The ones that were cited were the SAM and the firewall software licenses. Um, this is an interesting topic, you know, because I've worked in many MIS departments, IT departments, and one of the things we do annually is review software licenses and all that. And guess what? We don't pay uh, uh, these annual fees. I mean, you're talking a considerable amount of money that we pay for annual fees for software we already bought just for having someone to call on the phone that we never call on the phone, whatever corporation we're dealing with here. And I suspect that's true here in, in yeah. town. But. I wanted to address that, and I did raise the question, will it continue to work? She said she didn't know if she'd get back to me. Isn't that generally for, like, maintenance they have it? Exactly, the so-called yeah. maintenance fee, yeah, right. in which they do nothing, generally. Not always. Some of them do, well, but uh, you have to be discreet with each one and say, okay, this is worth having a maintenance fee or it's not kind of thing. So you're suggesting we, we're looking at every piece of software and then going over with them or just having them hand us out the results? What is it you want from that? Uh, I, the question that I posed to her was whether those particular software licenses, the, uh, the so-called SAM as right. well as the firewall software, whether they would continue to work if we didn't pay the annual maintenance fee. And so that's what she's going to get Maybe back look at the last four or five years and see if we ever used the maintenance program. And theoretically, has it... Oh, yeah, there are other questions. I think central yeah. is, will it work or not kind of thing. You know, we can proceed from there, uh, you know, in subsequent time. Uh, okay. So, thank you. Any, anything else on that? Okay. Um, and of course, uh, Mr. Warburton gave me yet another task, which was <laughs> to uh, to get an official or a legal opinion on the second year trash truck lease. Um, uh, what I have done is I've observed the selectmen's presentation. Uh, they had a presentation uh, Monday of last week. I assume you all saw that presentation. Yes in which they discussed uh, a, a recommendation, I believe the phrase was, mm -hmm. from DRA, uh, which they decided not to pursue. Mm -hmm. um, 
And with that, as I had spent a few days trying to contemplate exactly what question I was trying to get answered, uh, and, and that was raised, I thought, well, gee, I'll call DRA and find out what they were recommending and why. And uh, that proves a bit challenging to get in contact with someone uh, that could actually deal with that topic. Uh, eventually, I talked to a supervisor there and uh, spoke for about an hour and got a subsequent email from it in terms of documentation as to what they were recommending. Um, and essentially, what they were recommending is, is that because, well, first of all, let me, let me begin by saying that if you have a five-year lease with a non, oh, excuse me, if you have a five-year lease and there is no so-called escape clause, technically called a non-appropriation clause. Um, then what you have is a requirement to get it passed by the legislative body, that is to say the town meeting voters, by a 60% vote, because they're committing in future years. Just like a bond, it's considered a long-term debt yes. by, by law. But when you have a non-appropriation clause, then you're only appropriating for one year. Mm, right. And of course, a one-year appropriation only requires a 50% uh, vote by the town meeting voters. And the Warren article in question, which was passed in 2018 of March, uh, was a one-year appropriation. Uh, so the question is, what's the proper way of, of appropriating money in subsequent years? Do you do it through the budget or through a separate Warren article? And DRA recommended um, that each year there be a separate Warren article to appropriate money for that year's lease payment. DRA is not an enforcement agency. They only are uh, there to provide advice, uh, and so they advised me. Okay. Uh, they sent me some uh, legal cases, judgments on, on relative to this topic, which I've examined. Uh, apparently, uh, the most recent one was uh, apparently done pro se. That means to say the guy didn't hire a lawyer. He just went to court and filed his complaint. Judge heard it, agreed with him, and ordered <laughs> the town to make appropriate adjustments. Uh, so that appears to be the next step, but I would suggest to you that the political process is not over and it should be done in-house. We shouldn't have to go out of house to resolve the issue. Um, so I had a conversation with, with Fred, uh, asking him if, uh, if uh, well, we had a conversation in general, but during that conversation, I asked um, if he had a problem with me asking for Mark Gerald's legal opinion on the matter because apparently he did not get one, neither did the board select and get a legal opinion from Gerald prior to them deciding not to follow the DRA recommendation. Um, Fred told me that that would have to go to the board selectman because the town lawyer does not work for him, he works for the town selectman, which is a point of confusion for me. I thought that was changed last year, but I guess I was wrong. And no, I have not contacted NHMA for their legal opinion yet because the time was Christmas and all that coming up. And yeah. I figured I'd better wait for this meeting and get uh, direction from you guys as to what next steps you think is best for me to take. So uh, with what I've just said, I open it up for discussion. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, Brian? J just a point of clarification. Um, if you watch the questions I asked Attorney Gerald, I asked him who he reports to, and he said the manager. And now th this is what's been happening it, it, when it's convenient. It's been going on for, you asked, so I would ask our selectman's rep, I mean, it, when, back when Mark Joe was hired, he worked for James Barrington. Mm -hmm. And then they changed it to the selectman. And they changed it back. And then they changed it again. I guess I'm just trying to figure out, because that's an important part of this. Mm -hmm. So for the town manager to tell you that after the attorney said right here when I asked him. And we talked about that. We said, he says, well, now I report to the manager. And now the t town manager's telling you that I, it's, it's always when there's a tough issue coming out. They, they want to just, like, slide it. So that's the question. That's my first question. Can we get that? Clean you know, can, we, can somebody say who they work for around here? Or, I mean, well, perhaps Regina can clarify. Go ahead, Regina. Yes. The town council works under the, the town manager as with, you know, public works, fire, similar yeah. to that. We made that change. I don't know, a year or so ago, maybe a year and a half, year, ago, year and a half ago. But I think what Fred is probably saying is that because we voted the way we did at the last meeting, it's going to have to all come to the board again mm. because we already made a decision. So the legal opinion is going to have to come to the Board of Selectmen, regardless of whether it 
goes to Fred in between or not. That's well, how I, you know, I mean, but the town manager... I understand what you're saying, but it's a little confusing to me because, yeah. you know, early in the spring we went through the protocol routine. Well, a lot of things are confusing to me, and I'm a selectman, so <laughs> I, I totally understand what you're talking about. So I understood the protocol. If I need to get anything answered from someone uh, that works with the town manager, except Christy, who I can go to directly, then I have to go through the town manager to make the request, uh, which is what I was attempting to do, uh, or beginning to attempt to do. Um, so independent of, of what you describe, and I do understand what you're saying, uh, that is the protocol, or maybe it needs to be further refined. Mm. I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, I, I think that one option would be simply for me to contact uh, the chairman, uh, Rusty, and you know, get his advice as to how to best proceed on that particular point if you think Gerald's opinion is uh, worthy of pursuing. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think, and let me just thank you, um, add to that. I think it's important that we pursue it because there is a question that DRA was post, and DRA, whether it's legal advice or good advice or whatever, and DRA is DRA. And what they're suggesting is not what's being implemented. And so my, I mean, how many times throughout the years have we heard, well, DRA recommends this, DRA, and we, we follow the letter of the T with DRA because, you know, they set the tax rate and everything else. So my, I, I think we should pursue it because in my mm -hmm. mind, the voters are gonna feel much better one way or the other if the opinion, in parentheses, is it is what it is based on last year and the appropriations are one lump sum, we don't do it every year, or we put it on the warrant. I, I think that's a, this is a very important milestone because these multi-year contracts could continue to, to happen. And so I, I, however we do it, I think it's, it's important to uh, pursue, I think. Yeah, so I, I think we ought to have the answer. Right. They got another proposal in here. From Gerald and NHMA? Or? Well, either or, or both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Could I make a suggested uh, sure, position we take? Or? I say that you would let me contact my chairman and see if we can have a legal opinion to our board of selectmen at our next meeting, and then we can take it from there. Yeah, the more timely, the better. When is your next meeting? The 7th. Yeah, you're not meeting till the 7th. That's a long way That's away. That's a long way away. <laughs> I mean, I can contact. Then I would be fine for whatever. I think that if you want a legal opinion from the town council, we should probably go that route. Contact uh, Rusty and. Yeah. I, I think so. See Time is the of best the way of approaching tell it. Is. Better just to send it yeah. Well, I don't want to tell anyone anything. I'm just well, gonna, I'm gonna well, consult just with Rusty as yeah. to what's the best way to uh, to uh, get the opinion and get try to follow that it, process. <laughs> because we're getting close. And I, right. I want there to be enough time in the schedule for yeah. for these opinions to be consumed by everyone, including the selectmen. Maybe they would reconsider uh, their position uh, rather than to have to wait up to the moment of the deadline and, and take you know more. Yeah. Uh, if you get a timely decision, it would be worth it. Yeah, yeah. Really well, worth Well, could I also ask that that email to Rusty goes to the vice chairman of the board of selectmen, which so happens to be myself. No, I'll send it to you as the selectman's representative okay. to the budget okay. committee. <laughs> All right, there you go. That works. That will work. Good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, NHMA as well, is that uh, well, you also desirable? They, you talked to DRA, but you haven't talked to NHMA. Correct. Nor, nor because right. of the holidays. Right. I wanted to pursue what was done at the board of selectmen's meeting. Uh, you, could, you could try it. See if they I think it might, might also help you, Brian, in terms of formulating your attitude toward continuing funding NHMA. Uh, so I mean, that may be uh, useful in that Did context. Did you think I had changed my mind? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it could be useful yeah. in your consideration. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I continue to own this, and I will continue to try to get well, thank you. Good, the best good results word. possible, okay? Okay. Um, any other old business? Can I just, are we gonna, can I mention something quick on the CIP? Or is that sure. old? Um, you want to wait till is later? Is it old business? Yeah. It's more of a common thing. But I, you know what, I'll do it under. We'll save it for new business. I'll do it new business. Okay. okay. Thanks. Any other old business? Nobody? Okay. I do have one, one thing. I was observing uh, our last meeting, and there was a discussion about wages. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know this is a topic of, of, a, of a number of people. <laughs> and it, it got kind of clear to me, finally, what was going on is that, 
the Board of Selectmen gave non-union wage increases uh, which were less than the amount that was existent in the merit pay line item, sub-line item. And that those, those wages were, of course, only for a portion of the year, right? They didn't begin at the beginning of the year. It wasn't, pro, it wasn't retroactive or anything. Um, so under, under the default scheme, where you take the current budget and move it into next year with some exceptions, you know, contractual obligations, for example. Um, then the pay raises should be paid next year under the default budget scheme <coughs> under the merit pay merit line, pay line yeah. not by adding it to existing lines. And I think that's the distinction. Is that correct, Brian? That's, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's the issue, I think, that's, that, that's uh, gnawing at some people. For me, I was just kind of like, well, we've been doing this for so long, that it's just normal, but that doesn't make that doesn't make it automatically right either. And so I was trying to understand your point, and and I finally gra I think I grasped it finally. <coughs> uh, any comments on that? No. Okay. Uh, I have no other other old business. So let's move on to the uh, Tom Warren articles. Okay, as you can see. Uh, or you will soon see. We have HamptonBud.com up on the screen, and you'll note that it has been somewhat refreshed, and underneath the Warren articles, there's now a new entry called BudCom Working Articles. You guys at home can enjoy this right now yourselves. And so when you go there, there is the, all of the Tom Warren articles that were delivered to us. There are 32 of them, uh, so-called Money Warren articles, uh, and we'll be going through this uh, tonight. Um, and so let us begin with the first one. I'm just taking them in the order that were given on the uh, screen. So the uh, master plan is the first one. And uh, <clears throat> so I'll open that up for a discussion or whatever you guys want to do. So any thoughts or comments on the master plan? By the way, if you wish, on each one of those, except for one, I actually have a video snippet of the, uh, the Board of Selectmen doing this thing. As part of the master plan? And there is an appropriation in that for eighteen thousand dollars to do the base work. You need that loud? Uh, uh, that's good. Has to plan for the town, so that oh, does need, need a board of selectmen recommendation. Need it a little louder for the audience at home. Right. So while we're talking on the microphone, I would like to make a motion. I know Rick's not here; mm -hmm. he couldn't be here, but he is home listening. And I would ask that the other board members allow him to come in tomorrow and give his vote. Vote on it so that we can have it either. However, it turns out right. Okay. Yeah, can we stop? Can we stop there? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Oh no, I, I was just going to hold. Go ahead if you want. Okay. My question to the chair is: um, Are you planning to? Only if you wish. I'm pointing out that each one of the Warren articles. Yeah, I could. I, could, I yeah, have. I mean, we can watch that at home. May I finish my answer? Home can as may well. I finish my answer? Go ahead. Um, each one of the Warren articles, except for one, I have a video snippet of the the selectmen deliberating and voting on the Warren article itself, okay? We don't have anyone here tonight from town management to present. Right. Okay, so in lieu of that, I had something to offer, okay? Yeah, my, my understanding. And, and I'm just demonstrating that ability to That's, you now. Okay, this is a 59-second snippet, for, for the example. demonstration. The, um, I, I received the Warren articles from Christie. I didn't print them because right. I... I thought, maybe I'm, I misunderstood. No, you're correct. I thought that, that, would, that she was going to possibly be here and give us copies, so I didn't print them out. I figured I'd and read the ones on the screen, online. See it. It's a good thing that you have that, because mm -hmm. I didn't print them out, so I don't have them in front of me to look at. But I can read, and I did read them at home, and I got the general drift of each one, mm -hmm. and I watched that selectman's meeting, and I don't really need to watch it again, but that's just my opinion. All right, well, I will suggest to you that we watch a snippet. If I run across one that I recall as being substantive, this particular one I don't recall as being substantive, right. so I don't need to play it right. or feel a need to unless someone else wishes me to. Um, but that is the article there on the screen for the master plan. Is there any comments or whatever on this uh, master plan uh, warrant article? I don't have any at this time. The master plan <clears throat> that the planning board is they working on, correct? Does do they work with the town manager and also developing that? You want to take they, that, Regina? 
master plan last time I checked is about 4,000 pages sitting in pieces in the town planner's office. And I'm sure everything in it is, uh, it's been sort of worked on, I guess, in piecemeal, but I know since Jason's come on, he's been trying to get it in uh, better order. There's a lot of sections of it. Restructured, maybe. Restructured, yeah. you know, more applicable, I would say. And um, this would be the first step into getting it. We've already scanned it off to our PC, so it is scanned and in one document now, which is good. But this would be the uh, beginning process of well, having someone look already, at yeah. it looking at it as one document, which besides the town <coughs> I'm not sure if anyone's done. In doing so, I'm interpreting that maybe they're also going to put a recommendation, this is for a second, third, fourth, something, whatever the, the things they need to do. Yeah, I mean, I would hope that it's going to be outlined a little bit as far as right. to recommending. I would think that should be added to the, for the for the voters to understand it. I don't think it's clear enough stating that. It's just they're going to have a planning thing, and we need this amount of money. I'd like to know what you're saying, that it was a, how big the document is, and what, what we can expect for the money, what they're gonna do with this document, such as restructuring it and put them in an appropriate order of things that we need to do going into the future. To make sure it was done, rather than somebody just pays $18,000 and it ends up being the same way it started, so they made 18 grand. So we're not gonna pay them the 18 grand until they do what people expect. Okay. I just think it should be a little more clearer, sir. Got it. Mr. LeBranch. I haven't created it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so how could you? Well, you won't know how many pages it's going to be until it's done. It's okay. This is the money to do it. No. It's, it's all in pieces and it stuff. It is not the money to do it. It isn't. This is no. just the start. This is the money to put together the plan to make the plan. Yeah. Well, okay. Not to actually make the plan. See, you're confused, and that's what I'm talking about. David, 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 is David not, no crosstalk, please. Now, what I find interesting here is that we've got two master plans, right, Regina? We have the town master plan, which is what this is addressing, right? The town master plan? Yes. And then we have the Hampton Beach master plan. Right. right. Separate and distinct. Seems to be getting master updated plan. more rapidly than the whole town, yeah. Well, I, I don't know about that, but uh, what I have observed over the years is. Uh, that the master plan, or plans, as they apply to a particular case, is often ignored whenever it seems to be inconvenient. Right. And it's vigorously invoked whenever it's very convenient to do so. Yep. So, which has always led me to the question as I watch these meetings, why are we even bother with a master plan at all? I mean, what is the possible advantage to it? given that it's ignored when inconvenient and perhaps overemphasized when it is convenient to do so. Ms. Philip Branch? <laughs> Why wouldn't the town of Hampton's master plan include the Hampton Beach, which is part of the town of Hampton? How, can that, how could you have a master plan for the town without including the beach? Well, the way it transpired was this. There was a town master plan. Okay? And then there was a warrant article to pay, I think it was $50,000 for a beach master plan. That was the plan. beach plan in 2001. Okay. Yeah. And it failed. So the local powers to be decided to uh, get, I think, DOT or someone in the state it was to actually pick state up parts. half of that amount. State so parts. the next warrant article the next year was for $25,000 and it was sold to the voters as a as a uh, limited time sale only, 50% off kind of thing. <laughs> And so it, it, it was it was uh, it was subsequently passed, yep. and thus they created the the Hampton Beach Master Plan. I don't think they've updated the town master plan since then. And that was this was like what 2001 something. It was a long time. 2001. All the time. Yeah. yeah. So Regina, go ahead. Like I stated, up until recently, when we actually took the 4,000 pages of what does exist of a master plan, which is pieces of whatever is supposed to be in the master plan. Okay. So. If any of you, I'm not sure, but I know I didn't go into the town planner's office and even consider looking at 4,000 separate <coughs> pieces of paper. Nor I would imagine would a consulting firm ever look at 4,000 separate yeah. pieces of paper. So the first step was to get it into one document scanned mm -hmm. electronically so that we can get it off to. Yeah, maybe it, in the past it has been convenient to ignore it, so therefore there is no master plan, so you can just do whatever you want, right? But in all other aspects of life, Having a plan is very, very important to determine where you're going to be 10 years from now, 
20 years from now, 30 years from now. So I think maybe it's time that we got it into one document to have someone that can perhaps look, help us look at it independently as to what should or shouldn't be happening in the town of Hampton. I know the beach has updated some parts of their master plan, <coughs> which I'm assuming will eventually make it into the town of Hampton master plan. So I think a plan is very important and I don't really care what's been done in the past. I think it's important that it be looked at now. Any other comments? With the issue, uh, Mr. Ladd. With the issue of sea level rise, it seems critical that this exactly. data be brought together so we can start to address what is conceivably an existential threat to the continuance of this town as a town. That makes Mr. sense. Mr. I think repeating what I said initially, this reinforces it. I'm in favor of a master plan. I understand this 4,000 pages. And we're going to hire some consultant to put it in a proper order, as Regina states, and I agree with that. I'm suggesting that whoever is in charge, be it Fred or the people in the plan plan, we have a brief outline of what our expectations are out of this plan. Have it in order, have this and have that. I think it should be very minor, but I think it should meet those expectations rather than coming, I'm making this up as a bad scenario, devil's advocate, that it comes back with 3,500 pages rather than 4,000, and it's still rather hodgepodgey, so we really don't use it anymore. That's all I'm trying to get added to it, a little clarity for this, a little bit more on what the expectations are for the delivery of this $18,000, and it shouldn't be just, well, just do it. I think that's a little vague. Mr. Frank. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little confused. Okay, We're asking the voters to vote for $18,000 to appropriate the sum for the purpose of contract and professional services to put together a master plan. No, no. Right. Put together a plan to then produce a plan. So it's a plan to plan. So the plan to plan. Then yeah. it's going to sit on the shelf and collect dust? Possibly. That's, uh, that's not. Asking, what happened to the past master plans that we've had? Well, well, the past the master plan. Wait, 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 Regina. Their hold on. Regina already explained the past <laughs> master plans existing. Uh, the town master plan, uh, as Regina just explained, has now been assembled into one digitized document, right? The beach master plan. No, I understand. Which is part of the town. I'm really interested in the town master plan that's been consolidated into one document. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're spending 18000 to digitize it? So no, no, no. It's already been digitized. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's how it's all, all in one place now, okay? okay? Regina was suggesting that since it was kind of broken up and spread out all over the place physically, that it was difficult, if not impossible, for anyone to really consult with it. And, and now that it's been digitized, it's possible to be consulted with. And possibly through that, it's been identified as being obsolete and we need a new one, possibly. So if it's obsolete, why would uh, I'm not saying it's I said that's that's obsolete. my own speculation that maybe they saw that it was obsolete and it needed to be totally redone. I'm speculating on that. But then if it's going to be totally redone, is that another warrant article with for additional funds? Yes. Most likely. So before we move forward with the eighteen thousand, shouldn't we determine whether it's yeah. solid or not? The beginning well, of I would, the I would suggest that given that this is uh, kind of Controversial, so to speak, or well, let me no, rephrase. Sure. Let me rephrase that. It, it's needing more clarity right. that yeah. we just not vote on this tonight and, and deal with it on January third. Okay. I would also highlight that Mr. LeBranch point is that we're all in one town, and if we are going to do a townwide master plan, why would it not include the Hampton Beach uh, plan, either by reference at least or by creating a new one or whatever? So those kind of questions. I'm pointing out there now so that when Jason sees the video of this meeting, right. he can see the kind of things that we have before he comes in so he can do whatever research he needs to do. Mr. LeBranch, you have your fingers up. Yes, because the deliverables from phase one will provide the town of Hampton Planning Board with options for pursuing phase two of the project, mm -hmm. which would involve the full update of the town's master plan. So that's the explanation that, you, that seems to be people are confused about. It's right there. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. 
Regina, you, you also? I just want to, ver so Jason will be in when we talk about this again so that we can ask him questions Yeah, we're, we're going to hold off on voting on it right. until we hear from, from Jason, say? which is what I expect to do on subsequent ones. If we have substantial questions, we'll just speak, speak our mind with regard to some of the thoughts we have on the matter so that when the people do come in, they'll know what to speak to. Mr. Moore. I would disagree what I just heard from the gentleman on the right. Just read that it. is not clear enough from my perspective to define more specific deliverable spending. I think some okay. clarity needs to okay. be done Got it. in an organization way. Mr. Weber. Yeah, and I'm going to compliment Mr. Mara because I, I, I understand, I, I, I believe I know where he's going, but before I do that, there was an issue, there was a reason why we had the Hampton Beach Master Plan. You got to remember, you have seven state agencies that are involved with Hampton Beach. You had to involve the state. So in that way, it was somewhat separate. You had stakeholders from around state parks, DLT, the yeah. Office of Planning. So I understand that, but it's, to Steve's point, you know, we are all in town. The, the, the critical piece that, that I would want to hear from uh, Jason Bichon and, and others going forward is what Mr. Mara is alluding to. And to your great point in your opening statement about they sit on the shelf and when it's convenient, oh, we're going to go to section two of the master plan, we're going to, and, and that's happened. Mm -hmm. And then when it's not, so I agree with David, and we'll have more discussion on this about maybe some bullet points that the voters say, okay, 18,000, maybe it's, it's probably worth it. However, what are we trying to accomplish? What are the big things that we're, we're, we're going to look at, tell the public right out front? Because, you know, we're about more information and less, and I think that would help. But that, I, I think it's an excellent point, and I know where you're going, because in the past, people said, what am I voting for? Okay, it sits here, and then 10 years later, and it, it, there's no question it needs to be updated, but I, I think that's good. So hopefully in future sessions, as Regina pointed with Jason, uh, we'll get some more answers. But, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. We're all set with this one. Move on yeah. to the next one. The next one, we're not going to talk about it at all, because this is the budget warrant. I have not filled it out yet, so we're going to move on to the next one, which is the, the next two are actually police union contracts, uh, which I found, by the way, Mr. LeBranch, the video snippet on this, which is five minutes, has actually got some interesting commentary from uh, Jamie Sullivan. So if there's no objection, I'd like to play that. It's five minutes long. I would like to hear yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. These contracts we are going to talk about later. Uh, actually, the board has already approved the article to go in. Mm -hmm. You've approved the concept and, and yep. you've endorsed the article. So yeah. I would assume that the board would approve these two articles. Okay. Make a motion to approve the two articles. The police article. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Yeah, I just would like okay. to say what the, I have the schedule here of what the right. amounts are. So these are for the Sergeant Police contract and the Patrolman Police mm -hmm. contract. So the tax effect for the 2019-39 weeks would be 21275 and for the patrolman police contract for 39 weeks would be 80,204. Okay, so I would uh, just want to make those numbers mm -hmm. and um, I am ready to vote. Yeah, uh, just so everybody knows, the first one is, is six tenths of a cent and the second one is 2.4 cents per thousand. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, a motion, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Just as a matter of disclosure, that was the vote that was made later on in the meeting. They had uh, Jamie Sullivan come in and describe the tentative agreement, right. okay, which is what's going to follow at this point. I should clarify for the public that the contracts begin on April 1st of each year. Yes. So the first year is a nine-month contract. Um, you know, we, we've talked before. Um, we're now at that point where we have uh, signed the tentative agreement with the HPA. We're here for the board to officially approve that and move it to the warrant. Uh, I understand you already discussed that a little earlier. Um, but to go over the TA, um, what we have is, <coughs> excuse me, several language changes, um, but the cost items are um, related to the insurance. Uh, the, there's been an agreement uh, to move from the, the prescription plan that they're on to another prescription plan. You'll recall 
Um, this has been an issue that's been out there for a period of time. Um, the plan that the HPA is currently on is no longer offered. The other unions have all moved to the new prescription plan. We're doing the same thing with the HPA that we've done with everybody else. Globally, that plan actually saves both parties, them and us, money. We've put a pool of money in there to help offset a transitional period, um, and uh, that's a, a cost item. Uh, the other issues are uh, details, the request to increase the detail pay. Uh, regular details now will move from, I think it's $35 to $40 for the officer's overtime rate, whichever is higher. And it's been an increase in the alcohol detail rate. So that is, if you work in a bar or a detail where there's alcohol served, there's an additional sum of money that's added. That's been increased as well to an $8 per hour additional for those. They're, they're relatively infrequent, but they are situations where there is uh, they're usually uh, a higher risk or risk. problem for the officers yeah. they're dealing with. Thanks, Craig. Um, uh, with the wages, it's a three-year deal for 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. Within there also is an adjustment to the starting wage to the patrolman and an adjustment to the starting wage of the sergeant, so a first-year sergeant or first-year patrolman. There's been an adjustment in those wages. Patrolmen, obviously, to be more competitive with some of the area or area, or the places we're around. With the sergeants, we made an adjustment because there was a deficiency uh, in the prior contracts, the way things went, where there were circumstances where there was a sergeant supervisor who was making less money than a, yeah. a, a patrol officer that they were supervising. So we've corrected that to, to deal with that deficiency. Really, that's that's the extent of it. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Go ahead. I just want to say I was part of the <coughs> negotiations team this year, and I think it went really well. We had a couple back and forths, and I think the assistant town manager did a very good job. And I'm glad. Good team. Yeah. Good team on both sides. I hope that we can get this passed for our police department. It's very Agreed. important. I mean, when you talk about the increase in the detail, that the bar would be paying that, right? Correct. Those are private details that are paid by outside <laughs> folks. Right. Yes. That's where that increase is coming. So that's correct. The yes. employer yeah. picks up the tab. Any other questions? And we're talking two separate articles, one for the patrolman and one for the <coughs> sergeant. Yes, and the changes are the same. There's just a different, in each of those two mm -hmm. contracts, there's a different article number that's yep. uh, identified in here. Uh, you costing items, uh, I understand you went through that earlier, so you're aware of the costing items. Um, we've gone through that. You have the warrant article, so uh, I would ask the board to give us a vote. I made a motion that we uh, accept the contract. Senator Grant. Senator Grant, yeah. Right. For both for the patrolman and the sergeant. Yeah. I'll second. All right. Is that? Okay. Yeah, it's uh, the vote to ratify. Vote to ratify. Okay. So all those in favor? Four. So we're taking the vote on both contracts. Correct. Just to clarify. Correct. Yep. And now that's another thing that we'll have Rick come in tomorrow to see if he can. So, yes. Okay. okay. Mr. LeBranch. I'd be very comfortable to move and recommend this foreign article. Is there a second? No. I'll second that. Discussion? Yes. Mr. Morrow. Um, from my point of view, I think there's a lot of things lacking in reference to describing to me and to the public what goes on. I can understand that they want an increase, but it says estimate increase, and I don't know about it, over previous year's level. So what was the previous year's level? I don't know. Increase uh, regarding what? They have estimated increase uh, 2019, 39 weeks, 21,275. Oh, that's an increase over the existing contract. Right. Okay. They're looking for a 2.8% increase. They, uh, that, Frank. Right? That's the stipe I'm looking for. So my question that is. That is the answer. My question is if it's over the previous level, why don't we put the level here of what it was before they want this increase so we can understand where because they're coming from? Because it's not required by law. What is required by law is to sanbernize uh, these war multi-year warrant article contracts, right. and that's what a sanbernization looks like. I'm asking for the, in order for like the prior thing we talked about. I cannot give you the answer to what the current contract calls for. I understand you can't, right. but uh, you're asking me what I want, and I'm asking for you or us to be able to get it. If you're going to talk about stuff, I need to know what the prior salary was so I can understand what effect that 2.7 is, means 21275 
We got it. There was a cost before. Got it. So my question is, can we get that information? I would suggest we get that. Okay, thank you. Anything else? So we can get that. And my next question is, <clears throat> for me to understand it better, because I'm a little confused, is the 30, in 2020, when it says 52 weeks, is that 32,000 on top of the 21,000? I assume it is. Is that correct or not correct? Yeah. That's the annual effect. Yeah, next year, yeah. So, so that's a new one. So they. So this the, is only going to be 39 weeks because right. it doesn't start till April. Correct. So I got that. I and got so that. that's going to be. So it's going to be 21,000 tax effect for 19. Right. And, and then, then the next year is 32, 32 on top of that. Right. And along that, year. that's 27,000 on top of that. Right. right. That's, that's correct. Good. Yes. Mr. Frank. Yes. Uh, well, I, I want to uh, say that I think a 2.8 percent increase is very modest. Considering that the uh, Social Security increase CPI was 2.85, so that's in line with what the CPI is. So I, I don't have a problem with giving the police officer a 2.8 percent increase. Anybody else? Overall. Yeah, I, Mr. Morbert. Um, I'm not ready to vote tonight on this. Um, when we put contracts together for several years, we just didn't come in on the first meeting and. You know, I watched uh, the assistant town manager's presentation, if that's what you want to call it, for two and a half minutes. It wasn't five minutes. I have more questions like Mr. Mara does. I don't want us to get into a situation that, and, and, as, and everybody is well aware in this community how supportive I've been of town employee contracts. I have a proven record of it, so we can get that right on the table. But to David's point again, you know, we've had several default budgets in several years. We've had many things that haven't passed. The firefighters themselves had to wait two or three years. I, I really think that we need to sit back, digest this, revisit this, you know, and for David's point, for instance, on the sergeant's contract, how many sergeants are we talking about? This is 87,000 over, over three years, and we understand the 39 weeks. And the patrolman's is higher, obviously, because you have more patrolmen. But I think it's, it's to, to just all of a sudden say, you know, and, and we may all do that eventually, but I think, personally, I'd like to just continue to think about it. We got these Warren articles. I, I still have some questions in my mind, but it, it's to the will of the Budget Committee what they want to do tonight. I personally am not ready to vote, but I, I think we have to be very careful. We go through these for the first time, and we got a lot, millions of dollars on here. It just, I think the public wants us to really make sure we're recommending the right things or not based on stuff. So that's, that's where I'm at, whether it's pro or con. Mr. Moore. I'm going to add a point of clarity. I didn't think we was going to vote for the war. Right, that's what I tonight. thought, too. We were supposed to research, understand them, and talk about that. That's correct. So we, and then ask questions what we need until when we make the decision in January. Right. That was my understanding. I'm not voting on anything tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? That was my understanding. Regina. I'd like to uh, extend on what Mr. Warburton said. The articles that are presented to us tonight, the money water articles, the potential tax effect, obviously excluding the ones that are coming from the unassigned fund balance, is two million one hundred twenty-seven dollars and zero and fifty-one cents. <coughs> uh, Fifty-one. Two million one twenty-seven oh five one. Okay. I, ha I don't have the Warren articles with me, but I've read them several times, and they're all right here. So yeah, I was under the impression that we were just going to be having a discussion on them tonight, and then. On the third, I think is our next meeting. Right. We could do the votes Thank if we you. were ready. Yes. Thank you. So Any, anybody else want to speak to the union contract? I didn't know that. Okay, I have a couple of uh, points. Um, during Jamie Sullivan's presentation, he referred to a change in the subscription uh, prescription the plan, the prescription plan, yeah. and um, how that saves a ton of money, right. while simultaneously saying that there are costs that are associated with that and I don't quite understand if it's saving us money why is it costing us money uh, there may be a good reason for it but I don't know the answer to that and the other one was the increase in detailed wages that are actually paid to the patrolman um, well it may be a good thing I mean I guess there are two wage increases one is just general detail wage are going to be increased and then there's one for details uh, related to where anytime there's a alcohol being served in the venue, then they're going to get still more money on top of the otherwise just increased one. Um, and so you know, that is not reflected here in the San Bernization because that's being paid out of the detail fund, you see. 
And if I could and add. The de well, you can't yet. And the, de the detail fund is got a warrant article out, which we'll be discussing soon, uh, to increase the uh, amount of money we charge for renting out our cops, basically. Um, but apparently this tentative agreement assumes that that has already been approved and we have, it'll have no ill effects since we're having this extra revenue, but that's an assumption of how, how the voters are going to vote and I'm, I'm, I have a problem, a question in that area. Uh, so those are the two main things that jumped mm -hmm. out at me. Uh, who wants to now speak, Mr. Warburton? Uh, once again, uh, as my old radio days, good segue, Mr. Chairman, because you are absolutely correct again. There are things that that was said, said at the Slackman's meeting by town management that really is totally separate from these two contracts. And one of the comments was made, quote, the detailed pay rate will go from $35 to $40 an hour or the officer overtime rate, whichever is higher. That is the key point, because we're not talking about just patrolmen and sergeants. Well, if and, I could make a point of clarification. And that's what I... That particular statement yeah. has already been true. Correct, it's but that shouldn't have been part. What I'm saying is this whole thing is part and parcel of a bigger subject discussion we're having on this whole detail thing, yeah, which yeah, we yeah. brought up. So I, this is why David's point is well taken. We're going to get this discussion going and talk further, but, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate what you said, so thank you. And yeah, Mr. LeBrand. I must have missed the memo. Uh, you know, in, in, in my memory of being on this committee for a number of years, we would, I might be wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. Process question, Mr. LeBrand. It seems like we used to do the Warren articles and there would be a room full of people mm -hmm. here department heads, mm -hmm. anybody that had any, perhaps the uh, planning board would be here to explain these yeah. mm -hmm. warrant articles. Mm -hmm. So this year, obviously nobody's here. I don't know if they weren't invited or well, so what So it's a process question. Let me answer the process yeah, question. So, so I, but I wasn't aware. I didn't get any memo that, to explain to me that we weren't going to be voting tonight. I had no idea we were just going to sit around right. and chat about we haven't sure. made any decision to vote or not vote what I somebody know what, what I have to me been, that it was what I had suggested at the beginning of this discussion is that if there are outstanding questions or issues that we want someone in management for example to address before we vote if any one of us do then we should probably delay the vote until they come in okay but if we run across a warrant article in which we don't have any outstanding questions there's no reason not to vote tonight, okay? And what I'm hearing is there are questions and issues among some of the members on this warrant article, on the two warrant articles representing union contracts, that warrant a delay in the vote. I don't have a problem with that, but okay. I thought I heard somebody say, we're not here to vote well, at least tonight. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that theory. Okay, I'm just trying to clarify. Because there are some warrant articles I, that I are just pro forma, we're going to probably vote on them. Because we're not going to have any questions. Maybe you can identify those as, I will, as, as they come get up. To them. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Moore. I think we ought to go back to looking at our last meeting. Maybe on, on thing. It was stated we're here to chit chat about them, and we need to learn and understand them. And that has a very clear description to me that we were not going to vote on them. We were going to discuss them. Right. Well, we're not going to vote on this one or the next All one. All of contract. them is what yeah. I'm saying. That was my understanding. Was that your understanding, Brian? To uh, pretty much, yeah. That was my understanding, because in the past, what we've done, and I disagree with, for last year and the year before, would go to a meeting like this and would vote for it in October and pass it. And then last year, we couldn't go back and change anything because we had voted for it in two months before, and we had all the information. And I think it's about time we get all the information so we understand it better, so that people watching this understand it better, <clears throat> and then we make a more intelligent decision with the pure facts, whatever they may be. You know, David. That's all. We're, we're in violent agreement. I'm only saying that <clears throat> we can take a vote on any warrant article in which nobody has any questions, everyone's comfortable with. We want, we'll run across one or two or three or four of those, and if we do, we should vote on them now and get it off the table and be done with it. All right? But for those that we have you know, substantial questions for, <clears throat> Oh, we ought to delay the vote until we can get them answered. So I think we're in violent agreement, David. Okay? May I ask a question on top of that? Sure. Being violent agreement. 
you as the chairman are going to proceed to contact or get the answers to the questions we're acting. Don't we need to have an agenda on who's going to do what or how we're going to do it? I would assume it would be the chairman's <coughs> role. Okay. But we need somebody to come back you've done before. Another process question, which I'll address. Please. As I was dealing with the protocol way back in the spring, uh, discussing what's going to happen in terms of making sure we have the people in here at the right time and all that sort of stuff. And it was decided by town manager and Christina that the best way to approach that would be to keep the keep a schedule refresh and, and keep Christina uh, notified whenever the schedule changes, which I have done, and that she would notify the appropriate personnel that are affected by those changes. Okay? And that has been taking place. What happened when we had our last meeting and we decided to have our meeting on December 26th was like the next day uh, when I informed uh, Christina of the change in the schedule, I got an email from, uh, um, I think, uh, Chris at DPW saying he wouldn't be available for the 26th. Uh, so obviously that suggested to me that Christina was doing her job and she alerted them to what's happening. And I subsequently got other people like Jason Bashan who said, well, I can't make it on the 26th either. Um, and other people, Christy, was subsequently followed yesterday or Monday actually, and town manager as well. So they all informed me they couldn't come, those individuals. Uh, so there you go. I, I will affect a, a change in the schedule um, to reflect the individual warrant articles that we haven't voted on, perhaps, or I'll somehow communicate that to Christina so that she can dutifully notify the appropriate personnel. I hope that addresses your process question. To a degree. Are you done? No. Oh, okay. I just want to be clear because looking for you to get the information and if the people come here there were, might be a question if the people come here in J January 3rd pretend that's the date and we make it and all this is not snowed out and they start giving some of the answers but we still have questions if we had the answers we'll still have time to delay. we could review them the same way as we do we'll them. still have time to delay on the 3rd okay that's all I okay. need to know thank you sir Mr. LeBranch I would like to withdraw my motion that's on the floor. Okay, fine. The motion is non-existent, uh, Barbara. Any other thoughts on the union contracts? Next is the other union contract, which we're going to treat exactly the same, right? Just as the select one did. So next after that is the uh, Fireman's Protective Gear Warrant Article, tentatively numbered number 19. And there it be. There's a three-minute video snippet there. I don't recall whether it's substantive or not. If you want me to play it, I will. I believe we got one of our information requests was how much do you need right now yeah. to uh, adequately fund uh, a complete protective outfit twice for each fireman, right? And I believe that number is on top of my head is something around 192 or something like mm -hmm. that. Was that what it was? And so this is actually creating a, a capital reserve fund, and it's initially putting in 200000 right. So obviously, uh, management could then subsequently, if it were approved, could subsequently uh, make sure that all of our firefighters are fully outfitted, uh, according to the two-per-firefighter yep. scheme, and still have some small change left over. Uh, this creates a capital reserve fund, so... will potentially be putting in some amounts of money in that over the course of several years to keep it at some level of funding so that it's there. And uh, the ice thing is it's not going to be in the budget anymore, presumably. If it weren't in the budget, as it has been in past years, what happens like in other topics, the money doesn't get spent, it gets shoved into the unassigned fund balance, and then it gets used for whatever. And so the money that was allocated for protective clothing, for example, is no more. And so, but the, with the capital reserve fund, the money stays in there for that purpose. Okay. The only other concern I have with this Warren article is um, that the Board of Selectmen are the sole agents of dispersing the money. 
and I'm not sure exactly what the necessity of that is. Um, and I don't have a really huge problem with it either. Uh, but I would also point out that uh, it probably all specified that the town meeting can do whatever it wants with any fund it wants at any time it wants to. And it probably should specify that in the Warren article just for clarity purposes. And that's all I have to say on this. Anyone else have any comments on this Warren article? I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea because hmm. the other yeah. capital reserve funds that we have set up over the years, this, this, these protective gear come due every 10 years, basically. Well, yeah, not including the turnover, which is more right. rapid. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so you, you, if you plan ahead, you have that money there to replace it when it needs to be replaced. What mm -hmm. we've done is got a lump of money, done part of it, but not all of it, mm -hmm. and then went a few more years and got another lump of money and did part of it, but not all of it. Right. So you, your 10 years are spread out every three or four years now instead yeah. of 10 years. And you end up with a lump and a lump, and we're going backwards instead of keeping up with it. And I think this would be more consistent, mm -hmm. and it also will be spent for this and not something else. Mr. Lover. Yeah, and I want to commend the Selectman Barnes, because if you remember, this discussion came, of, and this is a great teamwork, this discussion came result even before Chief Ayok came in, and we had discussion. Right. And, and I think Regina rightfully said uh, at one of the meetings, I mean, this is part of their job. They need this turnout gear. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite, in talking with the men and women of the fire department and certainly up through Chief Dayot, and we all understand it, to Mr. Pluff's point, um, I, I like the way this reads, and I, I absolutely think it's, it's the right way to go on this. And it, this was okay. something that we had through your chairmanship. We talked about this with the, and kind of got the spearhead, but that was good. And I, I think this is another example of money. This will be money well spent. This is part of their responsibilities. They need this gear and now they're gonna feel good about it, so. Mr. LeBranch. You may remember when Chief Ayotte was sitting right there that I asked how many of the 39 firefighters have a second set of gear? And he said, none of them, okay? This is the result of that. Not only so, do I remember it, Mr. LeBranch, I have the video snippet. I can I'm play it for you if you like. You don't need to because it's <laughs> playing in my mind right this minute. <laughs> so 39 sets, I, yeah. in case anybody doesn't I, remember. Okay. I think we all have been in, well in advance of this. <coughs> this is good. Evening agreed that this is necessary, the actual acquisition of this oh, gear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact that we're using the unassigned fund balance is noteworthy. Ms. LeBranch, you have more to say? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Would it be safe to say that um, I could move this and recommend it to well, this committee? Let me finish with my comment. Or do we have, I, uh, there are all kinds of questions that need to be asked. With my comment. So it's being used as the unassigned fund balance, which I don't have a problem with in this particular case because this is actually a, a need that is, you know, a high priority need. It's a Absolutely. safety thing. Uh, it's really a public safety. It's not just firefighter safety, it's public right. safety. Um, and so I don't have a problem with using the unassigned fund balance with this particular thing in mind. I do have one minor concern, maybe it's real, more than a minor concern, is that this should also read that if this oral article passes, which I'm sure it will, then the money that's in the budget will be removed for the protective gear. Because right now there is money in the, mm -hmm. in the budget, right? So that would be the only other comments I have. None of this is a showstopper for me to uh, not vote. Uh, we can subsequently, if we decide that we're, you know, we're all agreeing to do this one article, we could decide in our final review to take the money out ourselves out of the, uh, out of the proposed budget. So for that reason, it's not a showstopper for me. So uh, does anyone have a problem with, with voting tonight on this? No. Great. You wanted to make a motion, Mr. LeBron. I made it already. Thank All right, you. Mr. LeBranch makes a motion to recommend to the voters. And I'll second. And Mr. Walberton seconds. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor? It's unanimous. On Article 20. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Ten tentatively <laughs> numbered 19. Yeah, right. Uh, those are tentative 19. numbers. Just want to make sure and that's an excellent talking. point because those numbers change. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's on the Cap Reserve Fund turnout gear slash personal <coughs> protective equipment. 
it's for the record, so it's eight zero zero. Barbara. Okay. This is okay. Okay. Next is the firefighter safer grant. Interesting phrase. Uh, first year appropriation four hundred fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Anyone have any thoughts on this? I'd like to know, Mr. Morrow, how many firefighters we have now? Thirty-nine. And how many did we have five years ago? Okay. And what's the population then? In the population now compared to them? Exactly the same. If you look exactly at the, the same. Yeah. yeah. It changed by about <laughs> ten people. Pardon me. Well, wait, wait, wait. What year did we hire? I have the floor. You have the floor, Mr. Moore. Are you done? No. Okay, please proceed. I'd like to know how many firefighters there were, how they are now, when they were five years ago, if it like population. But the other part of the question is, I think there might be a very good reason to have, I don't know how many we should have. That's my, I'm, how did they come up with this number? I'd like the chief to tell me, explain that, or somebody explain that to me. But at the same time, I realize we have a lot of condos and other things going up, and we have the place up on the Marriott is new, and beside across this is the the new nursing home with the Alzheimer's unit. All of those things need fire protection. So maybe the population is consistent, but it's really the other things within the town have grown and make that a need. I'd just like to know what those are. That's all. So again, how did they figure it out so we could pro prove it or not approve, whatever. I'm I tend to doubt we're going to vote on this tonight, so please right, get yeah. all your concerns right. out on the table, Mrs. LeBranch. Could I suggest that we wait to talk yeah. about this yes, until the fire that. chief happens to be here that. to explain? Anything else? Well, no, I, let me let me okay. finish. I I did, I did want to mention the um, the fire department. When the chief is here, he can explain to us. Even though there are some newer buildings going up, and a lot of them. Of course, they're all sprinklered. They're all built to code nowadays. Um, a lot of, most of the action that happens with the fire department, and the chief will tell us this, which he's told us before, um, and that is that a lot of medical calls, mm -hmm. which where they spend a lot of time nowadays. Okay, not so much putting out building fires. They still have those, of course, but a lot of medical calls. This would allow, he, I do remember him explaining this to the selectmen, and allow them to have, for instance, a crew with an ambulance at the beach station. So there are benefits, but perhaps he could come in, so we won't be discussing this one tonight to death, because without him here to explain it to us, does that mm -hmm. make sense? To well, you we just want to raise the concern so that he has a chance to hear it before he comes to our subsequent meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to just raise up general thoughts at this point, because we're not going to vote on this one article. Mr. Walbert. Uh, I just had a, a logistical, well, I should say, uh, sentence structure. The last sentence on this article said, this article shall be null and void if the federal funding is not approved or received. It's mm -hmm. a question mark. Right. That doesn't make, it just doesn't. It's the question like mark a, is questioned? Well, that's correct. <laughs> it looks like a statement. But the other, the other thing, I, maybe this is a, a um, question for Selectman Barnes or something we're going to ask the chief. Is it? I thought when I heard the original discussions of these, there were going to be two separate Warren articles. One they um, killed one. Yeah. Well, I know that, but yeah. I, I just I, I I'm still not understanding. I kind of like that idea because one was strictly federal funding, and the other one was the four firefighters actually out of the budget. Right. Because we run into, and we. Dealing with the school, you know, you yeah. get these grants, and then they, the grants go away, and then they, they become positions. So I, I'm not, you know, I'm not too much heartburn on it, but I, I do want to, I guess I didn't understand quite why that was, why it was changed to one of you. Well, this one always existed this way. That's correct. And, and then, then we had another one without any of the federal funding right. in there, which would just be the total cost spared to correct. the town for the same amount of firefighters. Yeah, they wanted safe. to originally put both in. Correct. And then I asked the board... Or I, talk, I can't remember if I asked the board or I talked to the chairman about it, and I said, I don't want to have two in there. I'm like, one, it's another Warren article that's just going to make everyone want to pull their hair out. And two, it's, you know, if you look at the actual costing sheet on what, if, obviously, if this goes through, right. it's going to be a lot cheaper oh, than yeah. the other Warren yeah. article. Where we, 
So that's why we decided to uh, nix the other one and just go with this one in hopes that <coughs> we should get the federal funding okay. considering what we have to deal with down there. You all set, Brian? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Mr. LeBranch. Yeah, I remember also that Mary Louise, I think it was Mary Louise, was concerned, or one of the selectmen on the board was concerned that with the two wet warrant articles, it looked like they were looking for eight firefighters, and right. there might be confusion to the voters. Right. I think so, that's one of the other reasons but why the substantial they fact we need took, to keep in mind took is it down that there is one. now one article. Right. right. Apparently but questionable because of the question mark. Yes. Apparently dependent on getting a grant. The, That's still a branch. The, the I, I was looking yeah, I was looking at that. The question the, mark. The question mark. Okay. okay, I wanted to I wanted to discuss the question mark. See it starts out by saying, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate? And that would be a question, you see. Instead of the question mark being at after the word received, perhaps it should be after the word appropriation, which is the yeah, last it. word in that so you want to particular move sentence. The back well, I'm got I'm it. just trying to explain got where yeah, the, the question mark yeah. comes from. You see? Got it. Okay. Thank you very so much. Steve does not object to the existence of the question mark, merely the location. Got well, it. I'm okay. trying to answer yes. Brian's question. And I think I think you're making a very valid yes. point. Okay. That's uh, that's really good stuff, I suppose. Uh, I, I think we can, well, I only have one comment, is I've had the chief in here, um, well, <coughs> every time we've had, yeah. I've been on this budget committee now six years, and we've had the chief in here, and I think almost every year I or someone has asked him, do you need more firefighters? And the answer's always been no. So why suddenly do we need fi new fi more <coughs> firefighters now? Is the obvious question. That's a good question. Yeah. And yes. of course, I speculate when I say, well, maybe we need more firefighters now because there's a safer grant out there from the feds to induce us to have more firefighters. And it's merely that inducement that's spurring it. I don't know. But I would love for him, I, I look forward to him coming in and explaining the, um, the rationale, as many of you have said, for why do we need additional firefighters. Uh, I assume we have nothing else to say on this, right? Right. Okay. Next, reevaluation of property. This is a $150,000 one-year appropriation for um, securing a services of a licensed reevaluation firm to provide a town-wide reevaluation of property in Hampton. Mr. LeBranch. I, I know that the, um, we're supposed to do an, a, an evaluation every five years, and perhaps somebody could come in and explain to me. seems like we just did that. Yeah, there's an equalization rate that, ca yeah. that can cause, when you go below 70% on the equalization, or excuse me, 90, yeah. When you go below 90% on the equalization rate, the, um, the, the law requires you to do a reevaluation at that point in time. Right. So you can go as long as five years with a reval. Okay. But it could be shorter if your equalization is below 90%. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. I fully understand now. It has been reported, I believe, at the previous selectman meeting that we're presently at 84%. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I think the average is 87, but I think one of the groupings is 84, I think. But the average of them all is about 87%. Right, so apparently, you know, we're either well, we already are under 90% or on the precipice close, of it or whatever. So I guess the attitude is let's raise the money before we're told by the state that we have to do it because there's an anticipation we'll be told to do it. Miss Barnes. Yes, I also want to let the uh, Budget Committee know that I've been having discussions with Ed Taker for the past year or so about this before while well, he was still full-time and subsequent to him working over at MRI. And he's been telling me for that whole time that we're probably looking at either 19 or 20 for our next reveal, so. Mm -hmm. Consistent with my conversation with Ed when I could speak to him freely. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Mr. Moore. This is just a question in general. If, uh, currently, the way, the, the way the economy is going in a positive way, but at the same time, in recent weeks, the month of December, the stock market, the uh, Tariffs were imposed upon other people. The economy could potentially plunge. Now, this let, let me finish. If it does plunge, house prices are going down. If they did go down, 
is the question. And we might automatically go from 87 up to 95 using this as a pretend example only, and then we wouldn't have to do that at this time, but we would do it on the fifth year anyway, correct? I believe that's true, but I don't know it to be true. Mr. Right. Verla Branch. That's a good point, David. <laughs> the market went up though 1,086 today. points today. Today. Yeah. And I, I, Was it 1,800? Really? Not 1,800, 1,089. Oh, okay. Mr. Oh, that was a oh. Santa Claus gift. That's how they dubbed it on the press. Just, just to clarify something that you alluded to, interest rates climb. If interest rates climb, property values decline. Only because you have to pay more. When interest rates drop, property values go up. Got it. See. So, but going back to your situation, regardless of what happens with the economy, if, if the Fed continues to raise interest rates, and they're looking at two interest rate increases in the year 2019, property values will tend to drop. Okay, you know, the bottom line is you want to get into that little game of what causes real estate prices to be what they are. That's a very large topic. But what you're speaking to is the ability, David, the ability of the marketplace to pay, okay? And part of the ability of the marketplace to pay since the marketplace generally, though not always, but generally thinks of what's affordable in terms of a monthly expense, which brings in the interest rate, but also whether or not they have a job, which brings in the economy. So you can both be right. Thank you. Okay? So let's drop this conversation, please, about what causes property to rise or fall. Question. Please. please. <laughs> it's every five years. When was the last one done? I think it was three years ago. 2016. 15. 15. 17. Yeah, maybe 15. Wasn't it 17? I thought it was 15. No, it's just I a couple of years ago. 15, I heard 15, I heard 16. Going once, going twice. Well, it doesn't matter, Dave, when it was done last. Well, if it was done last, we'd have to do the fifth year anyway. That's my point. With the, the no, summer. it's not. It's, That's it, a good five years. It's gonna, we're going to have to do it before the five years. Though. That's for yeah. sure. I can't remember if it was 15 or 16, but. Well, 21 would say it was 16 in the. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, so what do we want to do? Do we want to vote on this or we want to delay this for a subsequent meeting? I could vote on it. I, I could vote. It. You want to delay it? Please, I want to delay it. You want to delay yeah. it? Yeah. What do you want in here to discuss this? The assessor. We don't have an assessor. By firm. appointment. <laughs> Wait a minute, what are you saying? We have an assessor by, by, by you know, it. No, he's not an assessor, he's a consultant. Oh, a consultant, that's right. Yeah. Don't we have a deputy deputy yeah. assessor? No. Oh yeah, well yeah, technically we do, yeah, yes. We have yes. Charlene. Yeah. Charlene. Yeah. You want Charlene to come in and explain this? She's Why the deputy. Her? Anybody else? Why not yeah. her? She probably could explain it. Yeah. Okay. Then so be it. Next. One article is on the part-time code enforcement officer. First year appropriation is uh, deceptively $17,136. I say deceptively because it's basically going to be paying allegedly for um, 39 to 52 weeks. It also is a number that I believe does not include uh, payroll uh, expenses, you know, FICA, Social Security, et cetera. Um, so any, any thoughts or comments on this one article? Mr. Blogger. Let me ask, um, and Regina, I watch all the meetings. I must, on the three to one vote, who was the one that voted against this? Was it Jim Swagman or Waddell? Was it you? I don't think we're ready for it yet. Okay, so the reason, okay. Um, and I thought originally they were talking about, two. meaning the book. We don't even have a plan. Thank you. Right. And then that leads me to my next point. <laughs> Regina's got a good point here because look at, look at what we're talking about. And Stephen knows, and Bob, and living on the beach, we get crazy in April and May and stuff. So this position, if it were to be approved, commences April 1st. But that's not putting the job uh, specs out, putting the ads in the paper, training. So let's say we're looking to June. Realistically, those places that need to be inspected should have already been done by then. I have, time is over, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a concern about, even though I understand why we need it, I have a concern, and I think Regina's word "plan" is very important here because uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not. I, 
I mean, I think it's a, definitely a good idea. Yeah. We talked with the planning board about right. having one, but <laughs> what I'm envisioning right now is that, like what you said, and I know there's a lot of people like doing some improvements down there now. People got to remember that if we enforce one building, we got to enforce, enforce them, all them all for the same thing. So I think it's a little premature to uh, act on this one right now. And the only other comment that I will make, because uh, obviously I'm not ready to vote on this one tonight, but the building inspector, they have, a, they have enough going on in that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and it's been that way for 30 mm -hmm. years. I mean, they're busy as, and I know Kevin said, okay, well, yeah, we need it and all that, but I, I'm not ready to, mm, I, it's just too many questions, one of which is if we fund something and are we really funding it because we're not going to hire that person probably till May or June by the time, you know, it's just kind of, to me, it's, going to be passe as far as what that person needs to do for the opening of the properties especially. Well, Mr. Lack. If that were the case <coughs> and this was withdrawn or voted down, your argument would apply next year at this time. Yeah, that's true. Right. So and I think part of the genesis of this was the outbreak of Legionnaires disease, hot tub, yeah. which caused an enormous negative for the town and the beach economically. And I don't see not needing this. So, the, so your argument comes at one point. I'd rather have it approved today, even if it misses next April cycle, so at least it'll be there post April for the next cycle. Okay, anyone else? I have uh, no problem voting on this tonight. Oh, okay. Um, as an individual member, I have no problem voting on it. Um, I think the facts are pretty much known, except for one thing that was raised by the building inspector, that he has no clue where he's going to put this guy, because he's yeah. got no, no physical space to house this guy, um, which is a problem. I think that, you know, Regina's point that, you know, it's not very well, it's, it's an, an idea that can be easily embraced, but it's just an idea. It doesn't have... Um, a real plan behind it, or it seems like it doesn't. And as Regina was pointing out, if you're going to start enforcing a particular uh, uh, building code or health code, yeah. either one, either right? Word. Any. You, then you have to enforce it universally. You can't selectively, that's you know, a violation of the federal constitution. Right. You cannot selectively enforce the law. You just can't do it, or at least not legally, anyway. Uh, and, and so, when I think about it, all right, well, all the laws in both building and health code in which it's not being enforced. And when you think about that, you're going to need more than one part-time guy. You might need three or four full-time guys to actually enforce all of that code. You know? So, the idea that if we're going to hire a part-time code enforcement officer and magically all the codes will be, will be enforced, is fantasy in my mind, Mr. LeBranch. I seem to remember that this the, this Warren article had a, a, a more money for one thing, and it seems as if it had a full time person attached to it. No. And then and then the discussion at the selectmen's meeting, if I remember correctly, Mary Louise said, Well, how about if we have two part time people? Indicating that this was more than just a this is a small amount of money. So, but, but wait, the, what comes to my mind <clears throat> is a, uh, a giant grease plug that was swirling around, mm -hmm. swimming in the pump station down at Church Street that the department, uh, Chris Jacobs, described to us. And the reason that that big circle of that big uh, grease plug is in there because people are not... <laughs> They're putting the grease from the restaurants down the drain when they're supposed to be putting them in a, in a disposal or some type of thing. That's the kind of thing that a, a code enforcement officer would go and enforce. Now, considering how many restaurants are using fried food and, and friolators and everything else, um, it seems like the, this person would be hard. Would be it would be hard job to get done just keeping up with that one thing. Mm -hmm. At this, I, I I'd like to know how much how many hours does that represent? Is this a like a twenty hour a week job that that they're that they're um, part time? As I understand by management's definition, presently it's thirty hours or less. Okay. Is that right, Regina? 
Well, yes, but okay. per, per uh, Kevin, the building inspector, he's saying right now is the way everything stands right now, he would be looking for a guy for about 15 hours a week. So that is what this number is yeah, based that's, on. Okay, that explains that. Thank you. Okay. That, that was the part that was a little confusing. To so me. as I said, I am, I am comfortable voting for this tonight, and if I were to vote for it tonight, my vote would be uh, negative. Um, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't expect it's going to change because I think I know all the facts that I need to make my decision on this. Mr. Moore. Based upon what you said and somebody else said, we don't have a place to put a part-time position currently. If, as you went on, we do it right with all the codes we have to enforce and we need three people. Well, if you can't put one person in any place, we're going to put three people and need a new building for this person of people, mm -hmm. staff. So, so I think there's a lot of questions that yeah. need to be, they yeah. need a plan. Do we want to vote tonight? That's the no. question that I have in my mind. Do, we, have, do we want to vote? I, I, I might be willing to. Could I just make one more? Mr. Wilbur. I think Mr. LeBranch, in, in his good analysis, really referenced what Regina's been saying, and that's been going through my mind, much to Mr. Ladd's great comments, too. What's the plan? I mean, 15 hours a week, and I think it needs to be a bigger discussion. So in, in a reactive mode, and we know the Legionnaires was terrible what happened, but I think there needs to be more discussion, like you said. There's like, maybe they need four or five of them, mm -hmm. you know, and... Yeah, I, I, I think there needs to be more in this. And so, yeah, I'm not feeling comfortable with this position as it stands now, even though the concept I'm in favor of. But I'd be willing to, if the board, if the budget committee, the res, res, my colleagues wanted to vote tonight, I'd be ready to vote. I'd like the, if I may, Go ahead. I'd like Kevin Schultz to come in and explain this a little bit further. That I, That's just me. I'd like to just hear him say, okay, I... 15 hours, I can get this much done, and I'm comfortable with that. Okay, and I, and between I, you and Mr. Ladd, who also does not want to have a vote tonight, um, I'm reading your mind, Mr. Ladd. Um, I knew you were clairvoyant. <laughs> CSP, actually. But, <laughs> no. I, think we've, I think we've exhausted this topic. Uh, Kevin will be coming in after hearing our thoughts yes. on the matter and, and, and get clarity on our mind, and we'll move on to the next Warren article, which is the Wonderful highway block grant. That boilerplate. <laughs> we do it every year. First year appropriation, five hundred and ninety thousand dollars, of which about three hundred and sixteen thousand is supposed to be coming from the state highway block grant. Right. But it's not contingent on it. No. So effectively, if we didn't get anything for a block grant and this warrant article passed. We'd be looking at about what? Two seventy three. Thank you, Frank. Right. About two hundred seventy three thousand uh, dollars for this puppy. Any other comments or thoughts on this, Mr. Morrow? I'm confused a little bit in the sense that this article is asking for five. No, Article Twenty Three Highway Block Grant is five hundred ninety thousand for roads, which is would need. When we go to the next one. 24, it says road improvement two different, two different, two different. Two different How are they different? I will get into that when we get into the next one. Okay. But this is about getting the, the highway block grant. Right. Theoretically. But, but potentially we may not, what you said was we may not get it. What do we do then? It, yeah. It's not guaranteed. Is that correct? That's correct. Theoretically, this warrant article would have been written, well, uh, let's raise an appropriate $316,000 because that's what we expect the state to give us. But right. the truth is they don't have no clue what the state's going to give them. So if the, could state, end up, the state could end up giving five hundred ninety thousand dollars, and we wouldn't have to raise anything. Local. If the state gave nothing, and we voted this in, would we have to have the taxpayers pay the five ninety? That's yeah. my question. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Mr. LeBranch. Am I incorrect in thinking that the highway, the Hampshire State Highway block grant money comes from the tolls? Is that where that money comes from? I don't believe that's the sole revenue for it. But it could be. I, I don't believe it is, though. I think there are other sources. Tax, I think. I think or gas well, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Gas are, tax, a couple of, there's a couple of different yeah. things, yeah. That, right. uh, revenue yeah. streams that are Feed it it. feeding it. Okay, yeah. so there, there is going to be some money, but it might not be that exact amount. Yeah, it might be. More, could be less. Considerably right. less, depending on the mood of the new legislature. Could be more. Could be more. <laughs> right. In which our state tax rate will go up. 
<laughs> Any further thoughts or questions? Do you guys want to vote on this article tonight? I could. Yes. I could. Yeah. Do I hear Mr. LeBranch make a motion to recommend? I'll make a motion to recommend. And it's seconded by Mr. Ladd? Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Okay. So uh, you have uh, Mr. Moore abstaining, everyone's voting favorably. Even me, yeah. In I, I vote on anything that goes on the ballot. So just so you're aware of that. Everything. Seven one zero. I don't vote on administrative matters. But that oh no, seven zero one, is that correct? Sounds right. Seven zero one. I could actually populate that. There we go. Like that? Mr. LeBranch. Oh, you had changed the screen. I was going to mention something about the next one. Okay, well, populating? let me get there. Okay. Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, which Mr. LeBranch is dying to speak about. This is the same Warren article that we do every year. Am I correct in saying this? Yes. Most years. Well, that's, I have a comment after you. So. No, no, but that, is this the same uh, one that we yes, tend it is. to do yes. every year? Yes, Okay, thank you. That's all I want to yeah. know. Mr. Walberg. Well, first of all, and I'm proud to see this, and I, and I want everyone to know here, and Mr. Pluff was involved, this original article was created in 1998 as a result of the Route 1 improvements for our 20% share at that time, which amounted to 400,000. 600. It was a, it would end up being 600. six, but we built, we built the fund up. And to your point, uh, there was several years of stop. I'm so glad that this is back. We need to continue to do this for improvement of streets in Hampton. And it's been in, in effect 20 years, but I, I, I'm very much in favor of this. This, is, this is, has worked out well. That's where the billion and a half came from to, to finish Route 1. Yeah. Million and a half they built up to. That's correct. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, I have a good Mr. Morrow. Um, we had talked before, which I thought was an important item. Uh, the streets that are going to be repaired. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this we could get this on it. But that's the one we should know. I'm making up a number here for the sake mm -hmm. of numbers. We have 25 streets we could do with this number, and we should have like what's number one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, they all should, I would think, unless something disastrous happened, if pretend they don't, did 20 and the other five didn't get done, then those other five should go to the top, unless there was something serious they might go down. We, can we get, can we request yeah. some sort of this that the public can actually see what the streets are mm -hmm. on the ballot? Yeah, let me speak to that. Thank you. Used to be we'd name the streets that we were going to Oh, I remember that. That was the old days. Right. And a few years ago, certain Budget committee member, who shall remain nameless, suggested that was probably too rigid for management, uh, and that they have a list, a, a, a master list of streets they want to address. And it was based on a study done by UNH, I believe, in 2013, mm -hmm. I think it was. And I believe they're still using that. I don't know how up to date it is or whatever, but I think it makes sense to say, okay, let's see the list. Because we don't right now have visibility to that, as far as I know. And so I think your point is, let's see the list and get assurance that you're going to go in that order that's on the list. Okay. Put it on the so we have some visibility as to what's going to be done. So I think that's a, a, a valid question, and I think we should uh, have management give us that answer, and then we'll be able to vote at the subsequent meeting when we get that answer, hopefully. Mr. LeBranch. I may be wrong. There was a... There was a Warren article, probably still is it, since I don't have them in front of me right now, that called for specifically to do Elaine Avenue. Is it Elaine Avenue? Street. Street. Elaine and Richards. El Elaine, Elaine. Elaine Street along with Richards, right, because yeah. went. there was a Warren article, right? They didn't perhaps they it. didn't push it forward. There was, there was a Warren article. I remember them talking it about it. It was proposed. Proposed, but they didn't do it. So right. they, so what I'm saying is that, in da you know, to answer David's thing, they did have a specific street with a specific amount, and they were going to dig it up, do the sewer and the street at the same time, like yeah. they just finished with Anne's Lane. So, and but this one, this one, the wording in on this one is, is was left open because of 
what you've already said, and that's why it's presented the way it is, versus having a list of all the streets, you know, attached to it. I think, and it was actually me that suggested it, we don't need to have the streets named on the warrant article because it introduces a rigidity to management. If something occurs in, 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 uh, on a particular street that's disastrous, you can't use this money for that street because it was, the street was specified. Yeah. Uh, and, and one other thing's come up as well, where you get, you know, you can't get a good estimate on the streets that were specified, but you're getting a good estimate on other streets that weren't specified, you can't act again. So that's why I suggested if we just remove the streets and rely on a master sheet as a reference point. Uh, but we have never actually called to see that sheet, and I think it's probably time to call and see that sheet, which is your point. <coughs> right. along, yeah. along with that is the aspect of what you talked about, that if something just, and I said, if something disastrous happens, and you need to move something at the top. You had that wording in here that whatever how would that would have that that would take precedent. If, they, if, they, if you get a sinkhole, right. right, right. So I assume that we're comfortable not voting tonight and looking for the answer to the master list. Is Thank you. Fair. Okay. Next one article will be DPW vehicle purchases. Mm. This is a unassigned fund balance uh, dipping into to acquire. One dump, one ton dump truck. So it's a plow and wing, of course. What would a dump truck be without a wing and plow? Huh? One ton? Just a one ton. Yeah. Just one one ton dump truck yeah. with plow and wing. It's a Chinese dump truck. <laughs> and two three quarter ton trucks with plows. And two sidewalk maintenance vehicles. <sighs> Mr. Moore. Excluding what we just talked about for the fire department, because of the strong need of those firemen having two sets of uniforms to protect their lives, I think we would have been sinful not to do that. However, <clears throat> I would like to get in a more clear definition, because when I was a taxpayer, and still am, but I was a voter not on the board, Whenever I saw fiscal impact, no finance, I almost voted for everything I saw. Now that I understand the process a little bit better, I think it should have a better explanation. I don't like no tax in, in front because the seven million, I think it's approximately seven million dollars, which is in the uh, that uh, unassigned fund balance. Unassigned right. fund balance. Thank you, sir. If it got depleted. Well, number one, all the money in there is all taxpayer money. When the, the, the people use the excess that wasn't, which is a good idea, they got up to the point. But it, it's not no tax. We've already paid taxes. So it's not that. However, if something tragic happened, like the, a, a wall with the floods down the beach and we needed to spend $6 million, we would deplete this one almost immediately. I'm making this up as a pretend example, by the way. Then in order to get that back to $7 million over the next whatever, we have, we'll be replenishing that money with taxpayers' money again. Mm. So it does have a tax impact. I think that should be somehow or other how this really works needs to be explained so the taxpayers, when they vote, totally understand the process. That it was your money that's in here, and when it goes down, we're going to use taxes to replenish it. So I, it almost sounds like you get free money when you're not getting free things. But this implies that to me. So I think we should do something to change the wording to make it more descriptive of what it really is. David. Period. We cannot change the wording on any one article. <coughs> the budget <coughs> does not have the, all, the only authority we have, authority-wise, is to recommend and not recommend. Now, we can give communication that we like to see this one article change, like moving the question mark on the other one article, yeah. for example. Can we we can make that? recommendations for that's that. What I'm, that's what I'm advocating. With regarding to the uh, fiscal impact note, that uh, is a uh, a policy of the Board of Selectmen in terms of how you calculate fiscal impact. Okay, And when they calculate fiscal impact, the way they use their formula, and it comes down to zero, the phrase becomes no tax impact. That's the selectman's policy, has been for years. Okay. I understand basically you're objecting to that policy. That policy should be sweet so that the it doesn't say no tax impact, perhaps it should say no future tax impact. 
physical impact. But there was a historical tax impact or something like that. Maybe that's what you're suggesting. I don't know. Right. But the bottom line is it's a policy decision under the purview of the Board of Selectmen. And uh, I welcome you to advocate, if you so choose, to the Board of Selectmen to change that policy. I have talked to a few ex-selectmen. Mm -hmm. and, and a number of them basically all said it needs to have clarification because it is confusing and we're not expressing everything. I brought this question up to other people who serve the office. Right. So, you know, and all I'm looking for is clarity so the average, again, taxpayers, even if we just talk about it now and it ends up being people are watching it, maybe that might help. But I, I agree with you, David, that the statement no tax impact is deceptive to the casual voter. There are a lot of casual voters. Could it be improved? I think it probably could be if, if they worked it. Board of Selectmen should be encouraged to rework it. I think that's probably a good thing. Can Always a good thing to look, take a fresh look at policies that were enacted long ago to get them more modernized, if you will. So, uh, but the bottom line is, I don't think that's going to happen between now and uh, the public hearing. It's just not going to happen as a practical matter. But we could put it in motion or talk to people that next year it might be clarified. That's a potential. Well, we've we done that. Get it done this year, we'll give, can you give it a shot maybe we've, for next year. We've just done that, and you'll have further opportunity to talk about it as well. Good. Okay. Thank Anything you, else on this warrant article? <laughs> Great. Oh, actually, I did want to say one Regina. thing. Regina. Just in case it, I don't care if we watch the Board of Selectmen meeting, but we had Chris Jacobs in, and he did explain how much has gone on an annual basis. Um, annual basis toward maintenance for the existing vehicles right. that we do have, which is, I believe it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. He stated, I don't remember offhand if you add them all together. So, as though it's not as dire need as the sec the uh, turnout gear for the fire department, we do need to realize that if Public Works does not have the equipment that they need, this town will not be able to operate mm -hmm. for an hour. So, I hope to see that this warrant article gets passed and. I understand what you're saying, and I do explain that when people ask me, oh, well, this says no, it didn't. And I say, well, the money's already there. So ideally, it would say no new tax impact. I guess you could even make a simple adjustment like that. But yeah, there is a tax impact, but it's money that the it's town historical. has. Yeah. It's a surplus of the town. You don't call it surplus anymore, but that's really what it is. It's a surplus. It's the money that hasn't been used. That's where the money's coming from. And, and everything is funded by the taxpayer. Right. And so if the money was used, we have to replenish So are you it. done, Regina? Yes, I'm done. Thank okay. you. Thank I you. would point out that, you know, use of the word surplus has been objected to by one particular Board of Selectmen member who has ceased violently objecting to it recently. I don't object to its use, and I think I would actually generally encourage it because the average person understands that term. Right. They do not understand how to sign bond balance. Right. All right. Exactly. Some of us do actually drill down on the stuff, but like you pointed out, Dave, unless you you know, get drilled down in the deep grass of the stuff. You're just going to, what the hell is that? It's free money, so let's <laughs> yeah, do it, you know, kind of thing. But it's not. It's surplus uh, from a variety of different sources that have been accumulated in this one fund that presently is called the unassigned fund balance, but also gets changed and renamed to undesignated fund balance. And so it's just kind of like this silly shell game relative to names. I just soon call it surplus as well. I'm a I agree with you on that, Regina. Uh, I think that probably... Uh, Maybe this one out we should wait for a vote until we have Chris in. Yeah. There is an eight and a half minute uh, video slice on this. And I'll remind you, if you guys and everyone at home, you go to HamptonBud.com under Warren Articles, click on Warren Articles, you'll see Warren Articles from the past from 2014. Of course, that's always been there. But you've got uh, the BudCom working articles, which is what we're working on now. And if you, if you go there, you'll see the entire list of the 32 Warren Articles that we have got for our consideration. Okay, so you can all take a look at that video snippet off of that page uh, as your homework, if you will, so that you can be better ready for Chris when he comes in, and maybe Chris won't have to spend so much time explaining things. Okay, so we're done with this, right? Let's move on. Replace culverts from Tuckfield and Eaton Park. Now, this was two separate one articles, which were merged into one because it only made sense. It was really the same place. Um, and this is, in fact, to replace culverts. Apparently, there's some flooding localized that uh, from heavy rains, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think drainage has something. Yeah, the drainage. 
That's what they're all about, yeah, is the those, drainage, yeah. Those pipes take the water that comes out of this cellar. This, yeah. this cellar. Yeah, everything here to, flows downhill to, to that place. Yeah. They put a gravity line across the right. street, yeah. and it drains down there. Mm -hmm. That collapses, or if that backs up, you're going to get wet right here again. But these are for, um, the physical property are actually parks, right? That's these culverts are in. They go, they go under Park Avenue. Well, I'm not on the street. I mean the actual park. Yeah. They're parks. Like, the culverts park. exist in the park. park. Yeah. At Tuckfield, yeah. You're talking about Tuckfield. Them that yeah, like, oh. right. Yeah. That's what the problems they had when they were trying to build the new playground. Right. 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 It was all the so the only question I have on this is the source of funding, because it seems to me that this is a park expense, and we have a park and recreation uh, fund for park and recreation expenses. So, you know, why shouldn't we use that? Um, that's the main question I have. Otherwise, I'm okay with doing the work. I think it needs probably to get done. Any other thoughts? That, that was the, ex the question, and I watched it in great deal to this, uh, having been involved with drainage issues with Mike Edgar and I back in the early 80s. Uh, I mean, that whole area is a nightmare. But, um, and I, I think it's needed, but the funding part, where it's coming from, that's that's what it was in my mind. I'd like to get some clarification on that. Because I, I firmly believe if the, much of it is revolving Eaton Park and Kids Kingdom and stuff, I mean, I, I you know, I almost think it could, should come out of that uh, rec fund. Mr. LeBranch. I agree with with both of you. I mean, if 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 it's contained to just the the park itself, but and Mike, maybe you can answer this question. It says right there, in, in crossing under Park Ave. Right. So it's actually going under the road, correct? Which that makes it. Right. That's no longer in the park. That's town that's, road. That's a town road. So right. see, that's where a little bit of confusion yeah. there. Plus the drainage comes from up here. This building, well, up to High Street, all runs that way. Yeah. I, mean, so, I think the source of the water is the question. It's coming from the sky. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. The issue is whether, and I asked that question earlier, whether it's entirely on the park, and the answer was yes that I heard. Well, now you're challenging that answer. Well, no, I'm just reading what it says. Crossing under Park Ave. So, and Mike's saying it does go under the road. Yeah, it does. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know that. But you know, crossing under Park Avenue. But it says. I hear you. Crossing under Park Avenue from the park, right? The culvert is taking is actually taking the water from the park, All right? Doesn't matter where it comes from; could be come from the sky. You just said. I think Jen Hale. Yeah, but if we do nothing, it's going to stay in the park. Uh, the everything that's affected by it. Right. The Warren article addresses several streets right. that drainage received from High Street, Toll Avenue, Academy Avenue, Tuckfield, Park Avenue, and Winnicott Road. Okay. Which would indicate to me it's a DPW a place. Hmm? A low place. So the water comes down. All right, I'm, in, I'm inclined to agree with that assessment. But can I just add something? Mm -hmm. If you look in the beginning, though, the where it all started, replace the Eaton, Eaton Park culvert and the associated arch pipe culvert crossing on the Park Avenue to Kids Kingdom parking lot. So aren't we, in essence, I mean, I, I mean, you're, Steve. I mean, it's it's a funny, it's a it's funny all thing. in town, but it could be. Split. I'm just trying to help us out as far as if we could get it from another fund, but if we can get some clarification, I, I may not have hot burning either way, but it's got to be done. I think Jen Hale described it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, no okay, problem. so we have basically questions about the funding right. source. Pretty and much. Maybe maybe prorate some some money from the taxes and some money from the park I think fund that would be or great. something like that, some combination. Uh, yeah. Leave that question open for a, a subsequent meeting, and we'll move on to the next one. Article, if you're okay with that, great. Next one article is the <coughs> lease purchase plow truck. <coughs> I have a two minute and twenty second video clip of this puppy, um, in which it was stated at the board of selection meeting they're going to treat this lease just exactly the same the way we treated the trash truck lease, which, as you know from a earlier conversation is uh, being kind of, or hopefully will be looked more fresh. Uh, 
I don't have a particular problem with this one article as it stands. The question is the subsequent appropriations in subsequent years. Well, that's if it's it. going to right. approach it the way we're doing it now, then, then that, that's a kind of a, a problem that we're really addressing via the trash truck. Right. So I would suggest that if you all agree with that assessment, we need to get an answer on the trash truck second year appropriation yes. before addressing this. Right. Let's just put this off I to agree. another meeting. Right. Okay, great. Next one is purchase the ejection trailer. trash trailer for a $91,000 purchase. Any comments, suggestions, whatever? Mr. LeBranch. I listened to the explanation, and on the 4th of July, <laughs> they're, they're literally dumping the stuff out of the trailer and onto the ground and then having to put it back in later on just because they can't handle mm -hmm. the amount of trash. This truck, this, this trailer is absolutely necessary, and I, I would be fine with voting on it tonight. As would I. I think the, the, the need is there. The funding is appropriate. It's, it's an article that stands on its own two feet. No, no tax impact kind of game going on here. Not that game is necessarily the right word, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's standing on its own, the voters can decide. But I think there's a need that's there. I'm happy to vote on it tonight in the affirmative. Uh, does anyone have any problem, any questions or anything like that? Okay, Mr. Morrow. I see the words. <clears throat> I just don't understand what the machine, a trash ejection trailer. We, we got five of them now. Mr. Plot could you tell well, me, could you explain them to me and how they work, please? They back them up to the transfer station. Yeah. Right? And then uh, town packers come in and put either trash or recyclables, what, right. whichever, into these trailers and it's compacted into a bulk load. <coughs> Ejection is the word that kind of... Well, that, that's, that's how they empty them. Instead right. of just tipping it up in the air, yeah. these have a ram in them and they just push, push it, it out, push it out the back door. The back okay. door is a barn door. It opens Thank gate. You. Yeah. Okay, great. I've been, to the, I've been to the dump. I've seen the thing get compacted, but I haven't seen yeah, it going. You haven't seen it ejected. Exactly. And that's what that means okay. is that it pushes that load out without dumping it. Thank you. It, it's a, identical to the five oh, we the have. Five they already have. Thank well, you. I've seen it before. Yeah. When I was a kid, I always used to wait to be ejected. Mr. <laughs> 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 um, I would like to make a motion to move and approve uh, and recommend this one. And if you go on YouTube, David, you can see that in, in action. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. LeBranch to recommend it, seconded by Mr. Warburton. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. That would be 8 to zero, 0, eh? Yeah. Okay, on to the next one. Replace the water line. EPW facility. I don't know why, but I could not find the video snippet. Apparently, I didn't make one for this, so I'm kind of like screwed up on that one. I guess there's a void there. I apologize. But as you recall, when we had uh, DPW in here, he talked about their water bills, and you know, we, he, he, he uh, induced him to speak in detail about the need to replace this. He made reference at that time to this worn article uh, probably surfacing this year. So here we have it. Um, again, this is a Warren article that stands on its own. You know, we're going to pay eighty-five thousand dollars. It's going to be you know, taxed. It's a two and a half cents per thousand on the uh, tax rate, and um, it's going to fix water leaks as well as providing an additional fire hydrant for um, fire protection in that area. So, uh, any other? I'll make the motion that we accept. Move by. Frank to recommend. Recommend. And is it a second? I'll Mr. Second. Ladd seconded. Any discussion, Mr. Wahlberg? I, I, it's the same question I had before, and I watched uh, Director size. Jacobs. Um, are we going to find the leak? No. Uh, well, no, they're just going to replace the pipe. Because he said okay, earlier well, that finding the leak was near so impossible without what digging was, up. Remember what that? was the, uh, yeah, I do. What was the, um, how much money have we spent not finding that leak from the water bill? Do we know? I don't know. Thousands. But we're going to resolve the issue. 
I understand that, but you got to bring these questions. It, listen. So you want this? We're going to do the same with your budget. We can't just. We, we got to talk about why it happened. Before you pass. And people spending thousands of taxpayers' money. I mean, that's what the point I'm saying. It would have been nice to know. We get water bills a month to say because we have spent, you know, sixty-four thousand dollars more. We now need to do this. You see the point? It's yeah. It's Brian, like, are you are you advocating we delay the vote until? Yeah. No, I'm ready. Okay. I'm I'm going to vote for right. it. Okay. But I'm just saying that it's it's we we can't just like oh okay well. It's like doing something to your house. Well, it costs hundred thousand dollars, but you don't know why it happened. But just so that the taxpayers, I think it would be nice for Chris to say, "Okay, this is what it cost us, and we really need to do this for this not to continue." You see what I'm saying? Sure. Well, you'll be here for other reasons. Yeah. Maybe we can get in this. Make oh, I, I think it's needed. I, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay, Mr. LeBranch. Yeah, the my understanding is that they're replacing a one-inch copper pipe, <coughs> and they did dig couple of spots looking for the leak and they couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. um, they could replace this stretch, I don't know how many feet it is. 400 but feet. 400 feet. They could replace it with another one inch copper pipe. No, they're not going to do that. They could, I'm saying, and then you wouldn't have the leak. Presently he's shutting off the water at one end or right. the other just so he doesn't keep leaking water continuously, but this is going to be an eight inch pipe which is going to allow for fire protection, a hydrant, mm -hmm. so that I guess in, was it Hooksit? No, was it Hooksit, Mike? But there was one, there was a town no, where the- f Further up than that, I think. Hanukkah. Yeah. It was in Hanukkah. The town garage burned down. They had just finished plowing. They pushed, they had just moved all the trucks back into the shed or whatever it was, <laughs> the building, and it burned to the ground during the night. Four, four o'clock in the morning, it caught in fire, burned to the ground. So his, uh, Chris was emphasizing very strongly mm -hmm. having this eight inch pipe with a hydrant there so that, you know, for fire protection. Mm -hmm. And that, so I, I think that that's yeah. what warrants this much money, 85,000. Okay, are we ready to vote on this? Yes, ready. I Who's might just, well, I'm in favor of that. But what you just expressed, if the taxpayers could see that explained, which is where Brian's going, so they understand what you're doing. Absolutely. I think that would that that'll be add a little embellishment to explaining this to it, because I mm -hmm. remember them talking about. I yep. remember the whole conversation very clearly about how we tried chasing that was wasting his time and money. Yep. But adding an eight-inch pipe is fantastic. I just think they add those words to it. And we approve it and whatever. Well, we can't it doesn't say eight-inch pipe. It says sufficient size for to provide. Hydrant service. He, he said could eight. be six, could be eight. Well, I thought I heard Chris say eight. Well, I uh, could have been. Could I'd be like six. to know what size, so we well, don't have to yeah. come back and do it again. Well, so it's a two-inch water main down there that feeds the public works garage now. So you're asking that we have him come in before we vote on this? Well, no, I don't think he's of, saying that. No. Okay. Just he just diameter. wants to know. The, he just okay. wants to know the diameter. Oh, yeah. Is it going to affect your vote? Knowing that whatever the diameter is, it's going to well, accommodate a heart. It, need, it needs to be done, but it ought to be done right the first time right. instead yeah. of two yeah. two-inch pipes and end up, you know, without a hydrant when you get done. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. I'm comfortable with the word sufficient size, but I think it would be helpful if we actually knew it was going to be no less than six or eight. Right. Without that would be helpful, but required. it's not going to influence my vote because it says sufficient size to provide the hydrant service. It will not affect my vote, but I would like to know what size minimum it will be. Again, that's just kind of an FYI kind of experience, not something that's right. going to affect my vote. Uh, so if we're done, I'd like to call for a vote now on this. Uh, Make a motion to recommend. Been made, it's been made. Huh? It's been made. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, Do you feel sorry. comfortable? Huh? Do you feel comfortable voting tonight? Well, if he puts in something that doesn't work, it won't be yeah. very good. Well. <laughs> He could do that with the right size pipe, too. No, it has to be something he's saying right here. Sufficient. It has to be sufficient size to provide right. hydrant he's, service. He's it if it's not did. sufficient size, then he can't spend money from this Warren article. Right. Because this Warren article specifies it must be of sufficient size. We, we have to place some faith in the DPW Well, director. that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Mr. Moore. Just for the sake of we don't have to be in a rush. Are you, no, just listen. Enough of your faces. We don't have to Can't help it, Dave. rush it now. This. We don't have to rush it now. Although they with some we, modifications. <laughs> all you have to do is wait, and you can ask, so make sure you get this, this eight simple, inches. It's a smart move. Simple answer. Right, and I know what the word sufficient means, and people are interpreting it, but what happens if somebody just, 
is he's sick and somebody else puts it in and does it wrong. We've had too, too many examples of that on all across America, like it's said. Part, part of your eighty-five thousand dollars, eighty-seven thousand dollars, whatever, eighty, eighty-five, seven. So what? There's no rush. We can vote on January third with this yeah, answer. Why not? Yeah, and I and I've got to right. add, out of respect to my longtime colleague, Mr. Plough, for over sixty years in this town. And his great knowledge of this area, and I, and I mean that sincerely, and I, I would say, I think we all respect Mike, and it, waiting to January 3rd is not going to be the end of the world. I think if we can just make sure that the question is answered, I'll be ready to vote January 3rd. Mr. Levin. Um, could, could you refresh my memory? Who made the motion? Frank? So are you going to withdraw it, Frank? I'll withdraw it. Okay, I'll withdraw the second. You don't need to. There's no motion to second. Right. I'm quick making it clear. I appreciate you down. joining in the unanimity. We've of gone into all. all kinds of obscure okay. ambiguity. All right. I appreciate <laughs> that. So we can move on now. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch, for your assistance. Uh, LED street lighting. For those who don't know LED, it means light emitting diode. Doesn't that make things clearer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a whole lot of little bulbs. And it's extremely cost efficient. Yeah. So the, the uh, point is, for me, it's $245,000, and it will be added to your tax bill, basically. It's uh, seven cents, maybe seven cents per thousand on the yeah. tax rate. It's an article that stands on its own. It doesn't have any funding from any other source. It's like either you want to do it or you don't, and if you do, you want to pay for it as well. Mr. LeBranch. I agree with you 100%. This is the type, I, I watched the explanation when the salespeople came in to the select board and it's, it's going to pay for itself after a while, after mm -hmm. a few years. It, and, and the light that comes out, a lot of interesting things that are going on here. One was, I just quickly want to point out that the light is focused down, okay, whereas the, the light bulbs we have now, you end up with all kinds of light pollution but you don't have that with these lights. I think that I'm an advocate of if the voters want to vote for something, they'll vote for it. In this case, I think that it's well worded. It, um, if anybody watched the selectmen's meeting, they'd realize that this is, uh, it's gonna value added to the town of Hampton itself. Um, and so hmm. I would be comfortable on making a motion to, uh, to recommend this one tonight if the others are. All right, motion by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Warburg. <laughs> I have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Further discussion, <laughs> which hopefully is not redundant, Mr. Frank. Oh, it's not redundant. <laughs> That's self-judging. Uh, the cost, <laughs> I'm just curious, it's 245, 241. <coughs> right. We have an anticipated rebate, anticipated rebate from Unitel of 122, 120, which is virtually about half or 3.5 cents. What's going to happen to the rebate? It also is a meaningless statement. <laughs> what's going to happen to the rebate? What do you mean, what's going to happen to it? Does it go back into the coffers or will it, does it get disseminated to the taxpayer? I don't know the particulars of the rebate, and it's only an expected rebate, and the one article is not dependent upon its existence at all. I understand that. So I ignore that line entirely. Other voters may choose to think that's a, that's a sweetheart deal, but it's just, you know, someone's expectation. Okay. It's not any kind of assurance at all. I understand that. So uh, maybe I didn't answer your question the way you wanted me to, but that's my answer to your question. Any other thoughts on this? Mr. Morrow. I have a question in reference to, we have 872 existing lights, right? How much do we pay per year for the current lights? So we can see a matter of what's our savings? And how long is it going to take over? How you think, well, it's going to take years. Is that five years or is that 25 years? The question is, and I think they should easily be able to get the answer to it, we are paying X amount of dollars this year because we have 872 and one, one light uses this much electricity and how much does it cost? It's not a big deal. Just add a little bit of clarity. If it turns out to be we get the payback in five years and they have the lights, and I definitely like the aspect of not polluting in reference to what uh, the gentleman on my right said. I, I kind of in favor of it big time, but I would like to know the answer And if other people did, it would may help, maybe help sell it big time when they see that amount. You'd have to rewrite the warrant a little bit. We can't do that. I know that. But maybe the people who come to present it to us could add a little wording to it. Thank you, David. Thank you. Ms. Regina. 
May I suggest that we put this off and have maybe public works director or deputy director supply the budget committee with what the Board of Selectmen received when we discussed this, which sort of breaks out, talks about the rebate, you know, a what yes. the savings is potentially going to be. Yes, you may, and yeah, I believe you have. Mr. LeBranch. Okay, thank you. I guess the question that David raises to me is that as it is presently, the town pays so much, eight times 872, and I, I don't, I'm not positive, but I think it's somewhere in the vicinity of perhaps $275 um, per light. Well, let's and be certain on it, Steve. Well, well, no, 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 no. I think no. Regina's but suggestion makes perfect sense. No, the question, the question I have, I'm not going to be redundant here. As it is right now, we don't own the lights that are up there. We are basically renting them. We pay a fee to have them up right. there. Once we buy these, the question I have is that once we buy these LEDs, do we own them? Because, because yeah. down, did I just hear a yes? Yeah. I thought that was in that presentation. Yeah. Okay, so well that's the, the question lights. I have. If you we buy, buy the them, lights. we own them. Right. So at that point, instead of paying Unitil a lot of money per poll yeah. per month, then we will be paying for the electricity, obviously. Right. I we'll think, I think your, your, is that your, your, your points of advocacy are correct as far as I know. I also believe that Regina's suggestion that we throw more light on this one article <laughs> uh, before voting is probably a good idea. Thank you. And so uh, let's not vote on it tonight, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next one article, okay, guys? Yep. Sidewalk Capital Reserve Fund. This is a fun one. Ooh. You know, we had a discussion about the protected clothing fund earlier. Yep. And the same applies here. Every year, we put money in the budget for a sidewalk repairs. And almost every year, nothing happens because the money is too small to do anything with from a contractor's perspective. And so the money just doesn't get spent and it gets put in the unassigned fund balance and so it's going to get spent on whatever later on. So the appropriation of sidewalk repairs is perpetually in a state of near void. By having a capital reserve fund, if we don't spend what's in there one particular year, it'll still be there to accumulate so that we can do some real sidewalk repair. So I think the mechanism for financing the activity of sidewalk construction and repair is absolutely correct. And I have to say, I've been advocating this for some time in the Budget Committee, because I objected to them having separate warrant articles for the sidewalk, and then having money for sidewalk repair in the budget. And more or less, this was my uh, suggestion as to the best way to go. Um, the real issue is whether or not you want to spend any money on sidewalks, period. From my mind, this is the best mechanism to from a financing point of view. It's the best mechanism to approach it, assuming that you think that we should do sidewalk construction and maintenance, primarily maintenance. So that's what I have in my mind. Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Moore, you're next. Thank you. No, after Mr. LeBranch. <laughs> we put, every year we put a little over $20,000 into the DPW budget, and it's not enough to get anything yeah. done. This is the beginning of a savings account where we put uh, put some money in there. 100000 is is sort of seed money to get this thing started. And then um, then they can draw down from it as they as they see necessary to actually get something done, perhaps when there's enough money in there to actually do something. Um, I see Brian shaking his head over there. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Morrow. Uh, I, no, to begin with, I think having a reserve fund for the sidewalks, I think, is an excellent idea. That's number one. Uh, I do have a question, though, in, in reference to when they talk about the American Disabilities Act, because I know in all new sidewalks, you have to, I think it's like six or eight feet wide, but they have to be wider than they currently are. But that is, that's all for new stuff. I kind of interpreted this would be, I'm making this up, I'm just asking for, can you help me out here, please? The fact if it was something that is already like the, the current standard and it has to be repaired, they repair it, it's, it's 
current size and they don't expand it out into the street then you have to redo the street is that that's correct so so this money would be to repair existing sidewalk the same way it is now as well as construct new and on new construction then we do the american disabilities thing which i think is a wonderful idea but i just going back and doing it might eat up the money i just was trying to understand it better. no it's uh the six foot, the six foot uh, width requirement is for, for brand new sidewalks right only only presently um, <coughs> existing sidewalks you can repair uh, without any implications on ADA I think the implied desire by almost everyone is when we repair a sidewalk we're going to put in those little ramps on the corners right right that's a great does idea. require yeah, yeah like that you don't think ADA little requires little. us to do that on a repair I just think it makes sense to do it on a repair. I agree. You know, and I think everyone agrees with that. So um, I think we're all understanding this pretty well. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Wahlberg. I'm against this. Okay. Um, I watched the discussion, and if you, if, if my colleagues look, the vote was 2-1-1, and I believe Selectman Barnes abstained. Mary Louise was against it. Um, we have sat here, and we talked about all the stuff Public Works needs to do. And for the life of me, um, we don't maintain, and, and, and this is not a slight to but I don't think we maintain sidewalks now that we have. We put, I am all for capital reserve fund concept, as you alluded to. But I just think, and, and believe me, this 100000 is is misleading. It's a joke. I mean, it's, it's not even going to do anything. I mean, it's going to take years. And as far as the American Disabilities Act, we've had issues, and even uh, Mr. Pluff and I were on it, I mean, it's... That's, that's a road you don't want to go down too right. often. But I think it's another example of, well, let's try to find a place to put it. We know we need it, but we haven't been funding it. And to Steve's point, there's just so many other things. And, and, to, and I know Regina's probably comment, and she did a great job explaining. It goes back to what I've said, Selectman Bond said tonight, this whole planning aspect. We just seem to throw stuff. We've got enough. We're asking... And remember, we're talking about the town tonight. We haven't even got into the school stuff and the millions of dollars that they're going through and stuff. We've got to sit back and say, okay, it's a nice to have or a need to have. When I listened to this discussion, which I thought was pretty relevant with the, the, the four selectmen who were there, I didn't get the impression there was an overall great rah-rah for this article, even though it was a 2 one one and I... I refer to if, if Selectman Barnes wants to comment on that. I would like to. I actually abstained because I wanted to be neutral, actually, until this discussion here at this committee. So I'm just going to sit here and listen to all of you, if you don't mind. Yeah, and I, I like how it's worded, but I just think it's an... I, here we go. Who's going to fix what? I mean, <laughs> we don't have enough staffing as it is now. We, you know, that, it's a valid issue to bring up. Right. So my reasoning is less to do with the fact that I, you know, sidewalks, I think it was Selectman Bean or one of the Selectman for years who said, I mean, people don't even use sidewalks half the time anyway. And it's like, and, and I might be wrong, I thought it was Phil who said that, but I, I just think we've got, when we're going to look at the entire warrant and we still got many to go, right. it's another example, I don't feel, I don't feel like there's a plan, that's my word too, there's a plan between the sidewalk cap reserve fund and what actually are we going to do with it? and concrete or asphalt. We've seen sidewalks get built both ways, and the question always asked to the Director of Public Works, who's maintaining them? So anyway, that's my two cents. Well, Mr. Warburton, you're singing my song for several years now. I've been saying we need, you know, I think the number was enormous when I said a couple of years it took me to get the answer. I got estimate of how much it would take to repair all sidewalks oh. in town. What was it like thirteen million dollars? Oh, exactly. Down? It was a very large number. Whatever. <coughs> I don't remember yeah. exactly what it was. But I think uh, Chris made a really good point. It's like with me. And I do have a seven minute, seven and a half minute uh, video snippet here. But he took he took a totally different approach in, in selling the concept, and that is, if the town is sued over ADA, and it's demonstrated that the town has done nothing to repair its sidewalks, which is evident in our recent history, then the court may you know, or even a jury uh -huh. may start looking uh, negatively at the town as a whole in terms of how they're treating uh, the ADA as a general rule. I understand what you're saying also about the numbers. I don't know, $100,000 seem to be just like picked out of the air. Um, how would you guys feel if this were 
a different number. I mean, I hear, I like the reserve fund concept. So let's proceed with endorsing the concept of the reserve fund, but, and then talk about maybe we could suggest a different number, uh, this year at least. But this is exactly why this discussion came up before. And it's the same thing in corporations. We cannot, as a town, put articles because we're in the reaction mode that somebody may sue us. Think about what we're saying. It's not the only reason. No, I know that. But I'm just, some of the comments that you alluded to, which I may agree with, but the point I'm saying is we've got to get away from this stuff and worried about whatever, even though it may be reality, we've got to, you know, educate the public on what we're proposing for the entire warrant and those things that, okay, yeah, and it, would, it should have little to do with all these other outside influences, because if that's the case, then we, we would have, to Regina's point, we'd, we'd probably have, instead of two million, we'd have 50 yeah, million. The, the, the liability argument that Chris brought up at the select yeah, meeting that's, was a that's, total that's, surprise to me. I had never thought of it, and I thought, well, wow, gee, what a novel idea. I hadn't thought of that angle. I think it is a valid angle, <coughs> and guess what? From my point of view, it's not the kind of angle that makes me go one way or the other. That's correct. What does make me go one way or the other is they, <coughs> they come in here with a budget. No longer is there sidewalk maintenance in that budget. Right. right. Why? Because they're going with this concept here. And I, and I love that. No more of this double dipping once in the one article and once in the budget. Now we're going to have a capital reserve fund, all right? And we're going to put some money into it. Maybe it'll be enough to start doing something right away. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be something that we have to fund over a period of years before we can do something meaningful. But I really advocate the creation of this fund. I don't necessarily buy into the $100,000, whatever the number is. We really do need to have this kind of fund. Otherwise, nothing's going to get done. And that is a default advocacy for basically ripping up all sidewalks in town because you're basically saying, if we have sidewalks in disrepair, let's keep them that way and they will just deteriorate by nature. Uh, so we don't have to spend the money to rip them up ourselves. Huh? I mean, I don't think anyone really wants to rip up sidewalks. But the problem is but that so that's what we do if we do nothing, uh, is we effectively let uh, nature rip up our sidewalks. I understand that, but let me, I'm looking at uh, Mr. Ladd and Mr. LeBranch especially. We've got sidewalks at Hampton Beach that have been deteriorated for 70 years. Oh, wait, 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 well, wait. no, but what I'm saying is, this article Brian, is not going to I, I believe I still have the floor. And your comment was about... Oh, okay. Your I comment think. apparently was actually about state-owned sidewalks. Oh, no, but I'm right? just using that as a reference. The town has repaired okay. the sidewalks at the beach. Okay. Well, some, yeah. All right. and, and the state is completely negligent. Uh, well, I understand that. I'm in, just in, using in their sidewalks. So right. I don't, want, I don't want the beach to get, you know, tarnished. It's got nothing to do with... Well, tarnishing the beach. No, 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 no. This, this Warren article has got nothing to do with state-owned sidewalks and never I should have anything that. to do with it. So, Ms. Regina... Potentially it does with the motion that was made by the yeah, board thank of selectmen you. two years ago. Well, potentially it doesn't, Regina, because I think it's... That I said I no think it's it, absolutely right? absurd that the board of selectmen would volunteer to subsidize state expenditures. To maintain state property. It's just beyond absurd. The whole reason I got into politics to begin with was to advocate against that absurdity. I'm and furthermore, I will point out to you, furthermore, yeah. I will point out to you that this Warren article does not grant the Board of Selectmen as agents to it, is it? As agents? Oh, they are. Yeah. I object to that element of it for sure. Because it ought to be, it ought to be, uh, you know, it, Having a single entity uh, decide whether or not to spend money from this fund, you know, leads to a lack of oversight. The basic concept of American government is checks and balances. With just one entity, there's no recourse at all except going to court, which no one wants to do. Right. I mean, if you're going to have, is, is there some reason this has to be done during the course of the year? Can't wait for a town meeting vote. I don't see any reason for it. And if there is, let another body be involved, like the Budget Committee. Let it be a supermajority, like a majority of two-thirds, say, two-thirds of the select and two-thirds of the Budget Committee agree, and they can disperse it. Or a vote by town meeting warrant. That would make more sense. So that's a problem area I have with the, the capital reserve fund. So apparently we are not ready to vote on this tonight, I guess. Mike, did you something to say? Are there any other issues or something else that we would like management to speak of when they do come in to speak on this warrant? Mr. Pluff. The Warren article to take the 1.5 million 
that was in the capital reserve fund to finish Route 1. How much uh, of that money is for sidewalks on Route 1 left and right? Or what, 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 we haven't even seen what they're going to spend right. on sidewalks. All we got was a proposal that said re repave and finish Route 1 sidewalks, and it had something about ornamental lights in there that I don't know yep. whether they're going to change the lights or not. I think they're staying on the poles, but I don't know that. But, but that's a good question to ask. How much money from that $1.5 that came out of the capital improvement road fund right. for mm -hmm. reconstruction for sidewalks? So we are spending money for sidewalks. Even though it doesn't say we're spending it for sidewalks, it does in that Warren article, and it came out of the highway fund. Well, it is questioned by some uh, that spending money for sidewalks from the road improvement fund is uh, uh, not an appropriate use for that fund. Well, they're going to do it. Well, somebody is. We they need to be called out when they when they do <coughs> it's appropriate. That's just that simple. To sit here and is say. Is there any other? Okay. I, I think we ought to ask that question. I think yeah, we ought yeah. to have an answer to it before we vote for this. Yes. Any other questions or issues that we should be letting management know we'd like to hear more about? No? Great. Then let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Household hazardous waste. We all agree this is completely right. no problem. So I hear a motion from uh, so moved. Mr. Moore. Right? To yes. Recommend this. I and recommend the by Heritage Waste Collection. Who, who shall we second uh, this second. by? Oh, let's give it to Mr. Walberg. Okay. <laughs> yes, ready? No discussion, I assume. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to discuss this, Mr. Frank? I just wanted clarification. Okay. Uh, town of Newcastle to participate? Yes. That's what it says. Yes. Right. To what extent? Why? Because the more towns that participate, the more revenue that's going to come in, right? They, they Okay. Don't they pay their fair share? Yeah, they, yeah, they come yeah, in, they'll come out, they'll yeah. pay their own. Yeah, yeah, right. It's just a central area to bring central it all area. to. Okay. They're too small to have their own. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to go from town to town. So you put it one. It's not an old castle. It's a new castle, so it's much smaller. Host community. <laughs> old castle. So make a message. <laughs> I hope you did. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. That would be eight, of course. And we'll update that right now. Okay. That was easy. Relatively speaking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, I love the title. I didn't make up these titles, by the way. This is the way it was given to us. <laughs> Complete Cemetery Building. <laughs> As opposed to an incomplete one, I guess. I don't know. It is incomplete now. You want to raise $11,000. For the purposes of completing the construction and enclosing the cemetery building, which I guess we did some time ago and just didn't finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is coming from the the uh, the trust fund, the cemetery maintenance trust fund. So I'm like okay with this because it's like, yeah, it's yeah. there's no tax impact and it's got nothing to do with the other side fund balance, our so-called right. surplus. Right. Mr. Chairman, if I could, well, I'm going to make one even better. Mr. Walbert, if we could take 33, 34, and 35, these are all coming out of the cemetery uh, trust, burial trust fund, which we... Well, let's do them one at a time. Well, I... Yeah. Okay. I'm I just think they're probably non-controversial as they're well. They're not. If, if the money's in there, so, you've got a half a million in there. So Mr. Frank, you're making a motion to recommend. Yeah, I'm making Mr. Walbert in second. We vote Any discussion? Good. All those in favor? Unanimous. 7-0. One of them was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'll be in the bathroom. He's not voting. It was 7-0. 7-0. 7-0. 7-0-0. Zero. 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 Yeah. Okay, there you go. Seven Purchase seven. tractor loader for cemetery. Again, the same yeah. financing mechanism, yes, I right? A motion to accept. And, and there's a motion by Mr. Frank DeLuca. <laughs> and it was seconded by Mr. Brian Warburton. Ready to and being no discussion, all those in favor are raising their hand, and we'll see once again that it is 7 zero, nothing. Zero. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Frank. Frank and Brian. Brian you can make a motion. <laughs> I'll move Article 35, Mr. Chairman, for the... Uh, are you recommending it? Uh, what did I say? You're going to move it to recommend. I recommend, thank you. I'll second it. 
The trees removed. Yeah. So we got that, Barbara. That was an inversion of motion and second. <laughs> uh, seeing no discussion, we're gonna, well, let's do a little briefy on this thing here. $50,000 from the maintenance fund okay. for what purpose? Remove, Remove trees. trees. Right. This okay. Is, this is so that's what it is in essence. Yeah. Uh, I hear no discussion, so I see we're all going to raise our hand in support of this, and the vote is again 7 nothing. 7 0, who are those who are mathematically fine? <laughs> Cemetery tree removal. Now, did we just know that's what that's we did? We're in Article 36. Yeah. Okay. Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. 125000 rounded off uh, to be taken out of the uh, recreation fund for various purposes that you can all see listed here on your screen. Even those at home, of course, are looking at the monitor so they can read it themselves. Is there any uh, discussion on this more than that, other than the fact that there's no tax impact? Because it's coming not from the unassigned fund balance, but from the recreation fund whose money comes from parking lots. 20% of the parking lot revenue goes into this fund. So it's actually not tax money in that sense. It's fee money. I make a motion we accept it. Do I hear a second from second. Mr. Plough? You got that, Barbara? Any discussion? I, well, I have a Mr. Frank DeLuca motion, Mr. Plough seconded. So are we all set with before we were talking about for the culverts by Kids Kingdom about revenue sources? Because if we pass this, I'm pretty sure this knocks the uh, parks and recs down to next to nothing. So I just want to let the budget committee realize that if we pass this one and we still want to discuss the other one, we might be better off yeah, just well, leaving that, it yeah. all over. I think that, that's a good point. We'll be highlighted when we get back to that Warren article. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Because the question of how much is in that fund will obviously yeah. become a factor. And that may be our answer to our question right there. There you go. Might be. And hearing no other discussion, Mr. LeBrand, no discussion? Okay. You just you just said what we need to know how much is in there. Right. Well we're able to vote on this particular article, right? We got a motion, we got a second. All those in favor? It is uh, unanimous at eight zero. What happened to this material? Oh, they all passed unanimously. Okay, next we have uh, information technology upgrade. Excuse me, but Mr. Chair, how many more do we have? Just uh, four more list. pages. <laughs> no, but how many more? Do we have like ten more? Or? Uh, we can make it. We can make it. No, I'm, it's just that I have to go. <laughs> then, then go to the bathroom. 46. I'm just going back to seven. I can't wait. 47. This is all right, what, what is disturbing <laughs> to me about this, first on its face, is it's from the unassigned fund balance. Why? Yeah. Because uh, it produces that no tax impact, which everyone will basically do a no-brainer and vote yes right. for because it says no, no tax impact. And I don't have a, sorry, a problem with that when it's something we really need. But I don't see anything like the fire protective gear. Yeah. We really need. This, I don't see a really need this kind of thing. It ought to stand on its own with its own tax impact. Um, and it's also broadly stated. I mean, it's covered everything in town. I mean, oh, we're going to buy a bunch of hardware and software and services. And you name a department, big or small, it's on this list. So it's like completely vague. So any discussion, Ms. Regina? I just wanted to make a comment, actually, because I realized I've had to, uh, for personal reasons, hook up a lot of my security. Uh, so, and I have McAfee giving my, you know, daily things on my phone and stuff like that. And in here tonight, this is, and I noticed, which I haven't had a chance to ask the town hall yet because I didn't realize it till later this afternoon, that I make sure now that with the McAfee that every site I go on to has that M there. And the town website, and it just got a notice on my phone that this, the Board of Selectmen public network is not secure. Mm. And, uh, good. So I think that um, I don't know if all this. I think maybe if we get some clarification on what it will consist of, but I think that we definitely need to make sure that we're at least upgraded enough that our system is safe. Um, personally, I have had a lot of issues I've had to deal with in the past month as far as uh, 
cyber fraud. So I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but I've been able to settle it. And I've had to hook up a lot of my security because of it. But I think that we do need to make sure that the town's, everything in this town is protected the way it should be. So I'm not sure if this is exactly going to do that. I'm not an IT person whatsoever. But in my recent experience, I've noticed that this Town of Hampton website is not McAfee checked or whatever it's called. It's not up to McAfee standards and all the other sites that I go on, I make sure are now since that has happened to me. So I think the town website does definitely need to get addressed at some point fairly soon. So. Well, if I may comment, I'm not, I'm not a fan of McAfee standards, although it's better than no standard at all, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a problem in the information technology space in general in this town, especially when you consider that we spent some, some money just a few years ago on what was called an IT audit. We had an independent guy come in here, uh, he interviewed you know, all the department heads and other personnel in terms of their information technology needs and how they were or were not being met. And I saw it as you know, basically a major failing grade that this town got. And some of the major, in fact, the IT budget committee, on, uh, the IT subcommittee of this budget committee did a report on that, as you may recall, two years ago, and highlighted some of the major points that were made there, and I don't see that any of them have been addressed. We were addressing other things that weren't even, even, even discussed, uh, certainly not emphasized at all in the IT audit report, which clearly indicates that we have a problem in terms of leadership in that area. Which, of course, by the way, IT leadership, information technology leadership, was the number one thing the audit report cited as our major failing. And we continue to not only not address it, but we continue to demonstrate it. So I have a whole problem with this space entirely because we're not addressing what has been clearly stated as our problems and I think that uh, <coughs> a lot could be done for a small amount of money if we actually had some, kind of like a punch list of the most important things to do, figure out the best way to do them, and then do them. But we're not doing any of that. We're not kind even, of like a plan. Yeah, kind of like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not talking about a plan to make a plan. I'm talking about a plan. <laughs> to do it. To work. Yeah. So, we've already got a plan to make a plan. That's called the IT audit report. We don't need a plan for a plan any more than that. You're saying we're not pre-planning? We're, we're not doing, well, we're not, well, we're just woefully deficient in this space in general. But what I'm hearing from Regina, and certainly from me, is I need, I need uh, this to be spoken to in greater depth. And so we're not going to vote on this now. Well, Any we'll other discussion it. points? I just want to make an Go excellent ahead. point. That was one of my two points. I wholeheartedly agree with what you just said. But the other part, I absolutely agree to. We can't keep using these unassigned fund balance for things like this. Seventy-one thousand dollars. We we've got to. That if it, if we've all just agreed, this is an important aspect of what we do in town. This should be a budgeted item. So I'm gonna. We'll talk about more of that later. Okay. We so we're on the next one article. Yeah. Okay. Boiler. Human service agencies. Uh, <coughs> I hear a motion from Mr. Brian Walburton and a second by Mr. Frank Deluca. And we're all gonna have no discussions because I hear nothing. So this uh, everyone who's in favor of this. Raise your hand. That would be a unanimous 8-0, Barbara. Electronic formatting of paper documents. This should really be digitization. That's really what it is. Correct. And it's an ongoing thing. The only question I have is, when does it end? It's been going on for years and yeah. years now. Uh, I'd like to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I don't know. It's not going to affect my vote, however. I would still like to know where the light at the end of the tunnel is. Yeah. So does anyone have any further comment or discussion on this one article? No. no? Yeah. Does someone want to make a motion to recommend? Mr. Ladd makes the motion. Mr. Frank seconds. All, any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, unanimous 8-0. Okay. Uh, next one article is Police Forfeiture Fund. We all know where this came from. We had an extensive conversation on this a couple of years ago at the Budget Committee. We all remember that this money gets into the into a fund somehow when police take assets 
right. from people who are merely accused of committing crime. And they have to go through extra hoops to get it back if, in fact, they were found not guilty. But in any case, it doesn't cost the taxpayer any money at all, and it doesn't come from surplus funds. Right. Right. So it's boilerplate. We do it every year. Any discussion? Seeing none, I hear a second and a motion from Brian Walburton. And Mr. Oh, we already have a second? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bluff? You got that, Barbara? Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous 8-0. Okay, next is the town office inside front doors as opposed to the outside front doors, which we did last year under a separate but similar warrant article. Any discussion on this warrant article? Mr. I'll LeBrand make a motion. Makes a motion, motion and it's seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I raise your hand if you agree. Unanimous 8 0. Moving right along, the Naval Committee Fund. That's Naval as in Navy, by the way. Yes. For those who are confused. <laughs> Excellent. Naval <laughs> Navy. <laughs> Shall we raise $10,000 for the purposes of, of creating a Town of Hampton Naval Committee Fund? And we're going to take that ten thousand dollars from the unsigned fund balance because that's an important thing to do. We can't risk it not passing at town meeting. So, yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I don't know what the cable is. That a capital reserve fund or what is that? Is that an expense fund? I guess, huh? What is it? It's for when the ship visits. Oh, it's for us to play yeah. welcome committee to uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, we used to have the USS Hampton fund. Yeah. For you. Presumably, it's for us to serve as a welcoming town yeah. to uh, Navy ships well, that wish to yeah. be welcomed by us. Now, presumably, that means U.S. Navy, although it's not specified. It could be the Russian Navy. I, mean, I, do, I don't know, okay? But the assumption is it's the U.S. Navy, okay? I don't know. doesn't say. Further discussion? Are you confused, David? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> when was the last time the Navy dropped by? Oh, regularly. We have, we have a ship, was it USS Hampton, is it called? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, now it's USS Virginia. They renamed it to Virginia. No, they, they didn't rename it. it. They, USS Hampton still in existence. They built a new one. Okay. So no, they, right. The USS Hampton was a ship, ship that was named after Hampton, Virginia. Right. Four, four towns. Hampton, four. Hampton, Virginia, Hampton, right. Iowa, right. Hampton, South Carolina. So they could be Hampton. welcome in four I was very involved with right. those. It's, it's not going to go to Iowa anytime soon. <laughs> for some reason or another, we, we well, I guess that the Secretary of Navy requested that we also welcome an equal stature the USS Virginia. Right. All right. And then they decided, well, gee, you know what we ought to do is just create a naval fund so that we can have the entire fleet if we want. <laughs> Even though, even though a harbor needs constant dredging. <laughs> Excellent. Mr. Regina. I'd like to make a comment on this because I was asked by Representative Edgar, and I was happy to do it, to be the Board of Selectmen rep for the USS Virginia. And I thought, you know, our thoughts were to get, while well, we have the people that have been doing it for a while, to get new people involved. And we thought money, you know, with having actual money to get you know, younger people, not the same people doing it over and over again, but while those people are still there to explain what they have gone through. But I have had no communication with anyone. I've reached out a couple times, and I noticed, I mentioned this in a Board of Selectmen meeting, I don't know if it was the last meeting or the week meeting before, that I just happened to go on to the town calendar mm -hmm. that I don't ever go on, and I, it said they had had a meeting that I was never informed about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're going to ask me to give money, and I mean, I guess it's a good idea, but at the same time, I think that I don't want this to be, oh, here's the money, and then we're never going to have to deal with where the money's coming from again. Like, why would you ask me to join something and then not let me know that there was a meeting about it? So, I, I'm not really sure what I want to do on this one right now, so I guess I'll just wait for the committee to decide. Mr. LeBranch. What are they using this money for? What are they spending 10000 bucks on? Are they going to have a banquet or something or a, a band and marching down Main Street? 
What is this ten thousand for? After the sidewalks are fixed. Yeah. What is the? What are they spending it on? <coughs> it just it's completely poof into the air. The law, apparently, I guess. I I I would be ready to vote for this. Vote against it. I'll make a motion of not to recommend. No, no, we don't want to do that, Steve. Well, I can tell you. Make I want to know positive sense, as you previously advocated. And then, and then, and then vote no. Okay, I'll make a motion to, rec to move this I to recommend. The, your second in it. Oh, you already moved it. Yeah. Motion by LeBranch, second by DeLuca, yeah. to recommend this, and everyone's going to vote no. We don't want to recommend this for well, all just, kinds of reasons. This is sick. This particular warrant article. It doesn't specify anything. Other than ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I can. Can I add? This and taken out of the unassigned phone box. This is just bad news all around. Yeah. I mean, at least they could do is exclude the Russian Navy. I was fortunate. I want to commend Regina and Steve because I was fortunate to be on the USS Hampton, and Mr. LeBranch also helped years ago when we had the, the USS Hampton crew in. We had things down the beach. Um, we were very organized. There was a committee. Regina's absolutely right about. I don't know who's running what. And yeah, it's 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 come it's gone into another universe or something, mm -hmm. and and I'm not comfortable <coughs> for somebody who has was on the original so USS Hampton yeah. committee for nine ten years. I'm not uh, I'm not in favor of this. Stevens absolutely right. I, I don't know what this ten thousand dollars or what. <laughs> nice round number. I yeah. mean, I, I and I appreciate selecting. Further process. discussion, seeing none. I'm sure no one will raise their hand when I ask. So for those who support this recommendation, raise your hand. Seeing none, I will ask you to raise your hand if you oppose this motion. Uh, that is universal 8-0 in opposition, or nay, as some people prefer to say. Okay, <coughs> next article is paid police detail costs. This is... Police attention. Administrative. Right. It's administration is what it is. Administrative. No, it is not. Well, yeah. no, administrative. What we're, we're charging right. going from thirty to fifty percent. Right. Yeah. But it, which yeah. is yeah. Well. Color cost. Yeah. Well, this kind of dovetails into the union contract discussion when they talk about the union contracts call to uh, for increased pay to those officers on detail. It's from this fund that they will be paid. So if this warrant article doesn't pass and and the contract passes, then. You know, there's there's a there's kind of a mismatch here, and of course, just as there is the other reverse as well. Yeah, I suppose you could argue that as well. When, uh, I don't have any particular objection to it. When this started, there was a twenty percent administrative fee. <coughs> correct. Yeah. That went on to these details. That's correct. To cover our cost. retirement pension stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. And that's what this is. It's and saying it, went it, to thirty percent. Now they want to go to, go to fifty. 50 right. to, to they said to balance it. To yeah. cover it, but apparently they're also using that extra money to give more pay to the detailed officers under the new under contract. The new contract. To take a motion to information. Yeah. Does that impact the uh, computation of the police pensions? Yes. I think it more respect. Do these details count as income for purpose of computing? Oh yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so it has a significant impact. Oh yeah, thing. well yeah. But Every time you pay uh, a cop, they they have to get their benefits that go with it, and part of their benefits right. is the pension plan. Well, but the fifty percent goes to the town. It goes to the town, but the right. town pays something less than 50%. Yeah, that's right. Pension. Right. Yeah. Mr. LeBranch. Make a motion to recommend this. Seconded by Mr. Frank. Further discussion? <coughs> Mr. Moore. I'm a little bit confused. The 50% goes to the town. Correct. Right now it's 30%. They're proposing yeah. to make it 50%. Yeah. That's correct. How much does the policeman get? To well, it depends. Uh, uh, we talked about earlier. Right. Right. The higher the officer is, the longevity and their rate and everything else. Then whether, he's on, then affects, whether or not he's on overtime. Whether or not he's on overtime. But right. then that affects the pension plan, which is the right. higher cost. Okay. Further discussion? I assume there's no violent objection to no. voting on this tonight, right? No. No. Okay. No further discussion. All those in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? 
That's it. Uh, it's uh, seven one, by the way. Uh, in the affirmative, seven one. Yeah. I move the next one. I think it's a housekeeping. Uh, oh, I really hate that word. Oh, sorry. Boilerplate. A boilerplate. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, they're moving money from what was left in the fund. Yeah. That, was established to the general fund. I mean, it's. Did you move it? I'll move it. Second. All right. Any further discussion on this topic? Okay. All those in favor? Done. Opposed? Uh, one opposed. The rest are favorable. I'm sorry. Can I help? The one opposed is Mr. LaBranche. Who made the motion? Mr. Warburton, Mr. seconded by Mr. Plough. Okay. Next one is conservation land. Fifty-five thousand dollars, a one-year appropriation to be raised in the first year, uh, to buy seventy acres of land, which may or may not be buildable land. I suspect <coughs> it's probably not, but I don't know. The number is so small dollar-wise compared to the amount of acreage, it's like, well, right. gee, the only thing that's surprising about this is they're not using the unassigned fund balance. <laughs> <laughs> so, any further discussion on this? Do we have a motion? Motion by Mr. Frank, seconded by Mr. Mora. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Yeah. Unanimous at 8-0, Barbara. One more. The Christmas parade, always worthy of a lengthy discussion. Do I hear, <laughs> do I hear a motion by Mr. Warburton, seconded by Mr. Frank. DeLuca? Uh, <laughs> any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. 8-0 unanimous. Thank you very much. You okay. playing Santa Claus? Uh, I, I voted for it. This is why it was unanimous, right? Please. Okay. Just want to I only have two hands, and I can't raise my hand busy with other things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it above board? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to make sure we get uh -huh. Santa on the board. That's all. Stop getting kinky on us, Bob. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So, uh, is there anything else under the budget downtown, uh, town side wise? No. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm we're all days. having a good time. Uh, that's what Christmas week is for, to have a good time. Thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, new business. Schedule. And that's exci always exciting topic. Um, let me get that puppy up here. What is it? January 3rd, next Thursday. Okay. Uh, I think we did away with what about eight or ten more articles tonight. Yep. Uh, so that leaves another twenty on our, on our plate. So we have scheduled our next meeting for January third, uh, which is Thursday. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm big on dates. You, I'll, I'll tell you why later. And the and the people will be here. You're going to yes. invite the pr people. Yeah, well, actually, uh, when. As an example, uh, DPW told me they wouldn't be able to make it here, but they would be able to make the bird, for example. Uh, because uh, the others who alerted me they couldn't make it tonight did not tell me whether or not they could make subsequent meetings, so I don't know. I just wonder if, is, yes, they will if we would probably kind of be. plan on um, getting them here so that we could move There's this along. Plan, though, as I described earlier. Okay, move yeah. this along a little bit, but those people will be invited to the next meeting. They will be made aware of, per the protocol that was established last year. Okay, uh, so the third, now we've got uh, on the ninth, we have SAU 91 articles. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of work to do with the third. The 20 plus one article to deal with. Because none of those are boilerplate, they're all discussion, so. True, but a lot of the things we discussed already tonight, we don't need a, the questions. We don't need Well, we raised issues and questions. Now they have to be responded an to, and that's going to take right. time. It's going to take time. And that may engender further questions. So, oh, it you know. could. It could, but we don't Do need to ask the same. time to respond? Yeah, they have they from should. this moment until next Thursday. Well, yeah. they're required. I mean, it's, there's a schedule in place. we got to do Right. That's why it's up there for everyone to see. You know. I'll get these snippets of this meeting out. 
will be up on HamptonBud.com sometime tomorrow. It takes a long time to process all that stuff, you know. So probably by sometime tomorrow, I have most, if not all of them done. Um, just looking over the schedule, there are any questions or issues. We've got to get our work done on January 10th. All of it relative to SAU 90 and the town. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to meet on the 9th for SAU 90. Yes. We have probably four warrant articles, one of which is the budget. Yeah. Five? Yeah, five. Oh, you got, is there a petition warrant article for another cop in school? Yes. At the request of... So it'll be a lengthy meeting. Uh, we might be able to get one or two town warrant articles in there, or possibly, but it's primarily going to be an SAU 90 meeting. And we won't know that until we finish on the 3rd. But the third, and after the 3rd, we might have some leftover work still to do. So we may have to piggyback it on the 9th. Also, the review of the budget for the SAU 90 that same night. Right? Well, that's one of the one. Yeah. yeah. The budget one. -off. Thank you. Um, but we have to finalize everything yep. on the 10th. There's yep. just no way around that. The 10th is drop dead for us. We've got to do the test. Everything is going to be done for SAU 90 and the town on January 10th. So now we are now approaching crunch time. I'm glad we had this meeting because we prepped the way, cleared the way as much as we could. Because we're now moving into crunch time. Yes. I mean, the maximum crunch time. And thank you for the Board of Selectmen for bringing us the Warren articles, I think faster than ever in my experience. And I'm very grateful yes. to the Board of Selectmen and the town manager for, for, <coughs> uh, for, for doing that. Um, Pardon? Well, oh, you can't right. do anything about can't do anything about private, citizen petition. Petition. So, yeah, um, I think that's. Is there any other uh, new business, Mr. Walburton? I don't have any. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're all exhausted. I'm sure. I know. I'm getting tired. Um, so I will simply adjourn the meeting if no one else has anything to say. We are adjourned. Great. Thank you.